Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very, very special day, and that day is because you see me and I'm not on the bus right now, which is absolutely fantastic for all of us. To my right is Will Compton. But before we get into this episode, we have to talk about the best vehicle to ever be put on the road. When rubber touched gravel, God went yes. And that has to do with the Chevy Silverado, the most durable, reliable vehicle on the road. Silverado is as strong and dependable dependable as the people who drive them. Chevy Silverado, modern and advanced with a ton of grit, a partner in getting things done, especially when it comes to the heart and soul of the pickup truck, the bed. With Silverado, you get a you get the most functional bed of any competitor. Best in class standing standard cargo volume. The inner gate folds to a large step for easily getting in and out of the bed. Available industry first power up and down Say tailgate. That again for him. Availability industry first power up. Industry first. Available industry first power up down tailgate or the available multiflex tailgate we've been telling you about with six convenient configurations. All of this makes the bed of the Silverado work harder and smarter. Silverado, it is strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking, just like the people that drive them. Listen, I, I'm not a reader, right? When it comes to books, I think you did pretty good. When it comes to books, I like the pictures instead of the words. You did say it earlier I, too. You said if I can read it once, I can read it. I can read it, and that one was a little different than the one they had up there. But I was a little nervous, and the reason why I'm a little nervous is. I'm a little out. I'm we're in a we're in a different I'm, environment. We're in right a now. different I'm, environment I'm, right I'm now. Pitting a little Are you bit. Pitting? I'm pitting a Do little bit. Do you mind bit. if I feel? You can tell us Duke Cannon too. That's definitely Duke I'm Cannon, dude. That's definitely Duke Cannon. Tell us where, where are we, Willie? Where are we right we now? We are at Barcel HQ in New York. The boys, like, I listen. I know we've been with the boy. I know we've been with Barcel for yeah. a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. But the fact that we're doing an intro and an ad read in the office in in these four walls, I feel like we've made it a little. Oh, bit. we've absolutely made it. We have made it like no other. And it's like, listen. Ain't nothing changed but the change, you know? The boys are still just being the boys out here. Yeah. That's life, and here we are. Big, big episode for you guys this week. A little cross-pollination for coming for you guys. Chris Long flew in. He was going to the draft. Decided Took a, P- took a PJ in. Took a PJ took in. A, PJ a in massive the flex. The, yeah, massive the only flex. thing that's a bigger flex is his outstanding jawline that you know the boys are just a little disappointed. Don't have he could literally give me 10% of that jawline and be totally fine. Yeah. He'd give me 30% of that jawline. Mm. The man takes a PJ. Where does he live, Virginia? Yeah. <sighs> what they that was from the hip. Man takes a PJ from Virginia. Instead of going straight to Las Vegas for the NFL draft, he makes a stop in Nashville, Tennessee. Comes to our humble shed, gets on our humble bus. For one thing, and that's to see the boys. To see the boys and to have an absolute outstanding conversation. And we had a bit of a podcast. We had a bit of a podcast and we had a first. That's what I'm saying. Will Compton. We're losing our virginity together to all the listeners out there. We're losing our virginity together. This is it. I uh Chris Long was boy enough to roll up a little J. Oh my. And we shared a little bit Don't of Don't point it to me because I didn't I didn't Yeah, yeah. We as in Chris boy, Long I'm, and I you know what I'm saying? We shared a little bit of camaraderie before we hit the bus. Chris, he continued to do it throughout the entire episode. The boy knowing myself mm-hmm. where I can go when I get in a nice little car wreck. Yeah. I had to like pump the brakes. I was, you know, dude, when that's happening. People were nervous for you. People being me. And I was a little nervous too. I'm like, I can't believe it. I'm doing this. I'm kind of just going straight from the like you said, straight from the hip with Chris Long. And uh it was interesting, but I think it went smooth, bro. Because you can be in your own head. Oh, there's no question Like, you can about sit there it. and you're overthinking. You're like, yeah, I'm really doing this on the podcast. Like, I'm doing this on the bus. Right. And people are watching and people are going to view this, and it's going to be me being high for the rest of my life in front of people anytime they want to see it on YouTube. Right. Or on audio. Right. And, and Chris, Long, when, when somebody like Chris right. asks you, you're like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. Because he's like a bigger brother to you. To right. us, really. Like, and we, it was my first time meeting him. When we first started That's the podcast. That's the vibe he has. Yes. And he was a boy. Like, he treated you guys like you guys were longtime friends. Oh, yeah. You guys have been internet friends for a while. We've been and when it came into a physical while. connection, the fusion was unbelievable. All I, I could do is step back and watch. Dude, we hit it off, bro. It but was I think, I, think it, I think it went solid. Like, I was in my head a couple times a little bit. Yeah. What were you in your head about? Thinking. What do you think in your head, your head about? Because I, you know, knowing, you know, boy, I'm well, a what professional happen? athlete. I've well, never smoked weed in my life. <laughs> but the things I've read about it, I know you can get in your head sometimes. <laughs> and then you see people looking so, at you. Yeah. So that being my first time. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things where he's talking to you yeah. and I'm staring at him because, mm. you know, I'm known, the boy's known to like, listen. And so I'm yeah. sitting there listening. But to not him. only listen, but digest. Right. Yeah. And he's sitting there talking, telling the stories. And when he'd look at me and stare at me longer than I was anticipating, mm. I'm thinking to myself, does he know that I'm high right now? <laughs> But you guys smoke together. Right, right. But but I'm thinking to myself, does he know that I'm high and I'm just staring at him high? Because mm. I'm actually listening to him, but he might not know that I'm listening to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I would start laughing. Like, in the pod, JP, I think you can, I don't know if you've went through the pod yet, but uh, like, I feel like I start laughing in the middle of him. Yeah, talking. there's a couple times you do. Go ahead, JP. No, no, yeah. It's just, you know, 
But then he kept telling the story. <laughs> hey, then he kept telling the story, and you're kind of like, oh, I, I got to tighten up. Nobody thinks this is funny. No, you were straight. That's a thing. That's, that's a thing. What, that's what I'm saying. All the books, all the literature I've read about marijuana is saying the same thing you're saying right now. There are points and times, there's times when it's just like, let's say it was you and your really close friend and you're sitting at somebody's house watching a movie. There's no reason to feel insecure about anything because you guys are just living. But like, you put yourself in a vulnerable situation. That's what I'm saying, the whole world. Right? The whole world. With 80 million viewers. I was going to say, 80 million millions. viewers looking at you, watching Will. How's he going to act? They're watching you pick up that left handed cigarette and put it in your mouth, take a puff. There was a lot. A lot of parents from the 60s that were shunning you right then and there. Yeah. You put that thing down, your life was changed forever. Right. You're now the bad boy of this bus. The edgy, oh, oh he's got a little bro. edge to Yeah, him. and you think, oh, he ain't that bad. He's wearing New Balance shoes or he's wearing them white Nike boys. But really, you bad boy. Oh, bad boy. I might, you, get a I might get a tattoo. Oh, shit. Imagine if you got a tattoo. I know. You start driving a Harley. No regrets. No regrets, dude. <laughs> You'd be absolutely killing it out there. I think you did phenomenal. And Thank I think- you. Um, based on what I've read, if I were to be in that situation, I don't think I would have done half as good as you. <laughs> you know? Maybe one day we'll find out. One day when we're way down yeah, the road. You know, and we're just trying based to get on my little, religion, I can't, but maybe just, if it goes... Little, the, we're trying to get a little excitement in our lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. When if things are dying down for us, we need to spice something correct, up. Correct. We, we'll, we'll leave the gym suit for another day and we'll just jump on. And one other thing that made it nervous too, nerve wracking, was like, there's, there was no like dry run about it. Like, he came on, he asked... He was running late. Like, I'm thinking to myself. Mm, he did Taylor, show up late. Taylor need to, needed to be out at a certain time. Because your boy's grinding. Uh, 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 honestly, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. I think you did a fantastic job. You're you were in your bag. Yeah. Please listen. We're going to jump to the show right now. Uh, being in HQ, we're not going to do our, our usual shout out. No free shout out of the week. That'll come. You guys have already listened to it on Tuesday's episode with Mike Chandler. See, that's where I should have known that. When we were saying, when you yeah. said to me, don't worry about that's it. That's all right. I just said. That's all right. And here I am looking like a fucking idiot, Will. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, here in HQ, we're going to get a lot of stuff done. You guys are obviously following along with us. It's going to be unbelievable. Enjoy the show. Hey. Subscribe. There it is. And rate five stars. I don't care if you're on Instagram or Twitter or any Facebook. Go there. Follow that. And then make sure you go to YouTube, your Apple Podcast, your Spotify, wherever you find for your listening pleasures. Wherever you want to go, get your ears a couple of orgasms. You want to go subscribe to that? Please. 70% of our audience does not subscribe to Bustin' with the Boys. We love that there's new people coming in every single day. Mm. But why don't you join on? Why don't you link, a, link up to our Redneck Yacht Club? Have a little fun mm -hmm. with us for the rest of life. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. we're on a journey, and we don't know where we're going, but as long as we're going together, I think we're going to be all right. Mm. Enjoy the show. So. Dude, I'm stoked you're here. You're finally on fucking Bustin' with the Boys. This is a big deal. Let's give one up. Hi, up Chris. King. Chris thank Long. You. Thank you. And um, that's how we thank you, boys. Dude, what I think the, the fuck are we drinking Aquafina for? Is this a sponsor? Class. No, Aquafina. First off, bleep out that. No free shout outs. Um, no, that's just. I think the cheapest water we we buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we're gonna bring the hydrated that, king. We got them Costco. Some of that fucking what, what air, yeah, some what's of that your air water. What's your go-to? Liquid death. That's why um we're they obviously sponsor you, they're not that great. No, they Liquid don't. Death. And I feel like I'm famous now because I'm on this pod. Oh, there we go. I feel like I'm famous now because I'm on this podcast. Sorry to kick the small bus. Yeah. Um I would love a sponsorship with Liquid Death. Mm. I'm not too proud to ask for it. So, oh, we will ask for you anything. You are the water boy. Yeah, yeah, a fucking the hydrated king. Yeah, dude. Like people like this, Tom Segura. He thinks he's like a hydrated king. Your guy. You you hung out with Bert recently. Yeah, and that was awesome, right? You were telling oh, me. Oh, it was that. incredible. <laughs> Bert was the man, dude. He was really fucking good, dude. Tom thinks he's the hydrated king. He's not the hydrated king. We're the hydrated kings. We're actually athletes. What makes I what qualifies a, you to be yeah, a hydrated well, yeah, king? Yeah, yeah, go through that. Well, I have a water charity. Sure. Yeah, I, I know that. End of discussion. It's right. a good one, too. Yeah, it's not you a bad You guys one. climb Mount Get Kilimanjaro? Little, you're going to do it one day. One day, yeah. I have a feeling. One day, I'll do it. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, but is that a tough climb? I have no clue. Is that like Camelback in Scottsdale? Like, what's the deal? It's, it's like a, it's, it's many. It's a little it's, grind, too. It's, it's a little bit of grind? It's a little, the, it's like, the Camelback. It's like many Camelbacks. Like, Dude, it's just stacked on top of each other. You stay nights? Yeah, you stay nights. Oh, it's a camp thing. It's, yeah. like, a, it's like a summer camp Yeah, hike. it's like summer camp. Dude, when I first met my wife, we went to California and there was like this hill that everyone went and hiked. And she's like, do you want to hit a hike? I'm like, pro athlete. Never been on a hike before. Yeah. So pro athlete, I'm going to fucking kill this. <laughs> Her and my buddy were, no joke, half a mile ahead of me at one point. I'm fucking dying. And the incline's like that. It's not very big at all. I was fuck getting murdered. Well, you're carrying a backpack. No, I was carrying my, I was no, carrying I mean, my pride like and that was pretty heavy at that you're point. 300 pounds. Like to those people, you're carrying multiple backpacks. So yeah, like, that's true. You're at a disadvantage. You know what I mean? So honestly, this hike is really cool. And anybody listening is conquering Killy. Um, and you can check out water boys. I'm doing the charity plug right off the bat, but it is interesting. And I'd love to have you guys one year. Seriously. Like big cat I committed. You were a water boy. I'm a water boy. 
I am. But he didn't do it. Well, the problem well, is I, I didn't give him a lot of there. shit to do either, though. To be honest, we didn't <laughs> give Taylor actually, a lot yeah. of shit to do. Taylor's not very good with responsibility. No, we were just I'm good with podcasts, his, football, his beautiful face on our play. website, dude. <laughs> Or play, huh? Oh, dude, I'm outstanding. I don't know if I'm outstanding, but my effort's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's, like I, that's like if you... Yeah, go ahead. When I was... Well... I didn't want to make any analogies. I don't, I don't know. know. Well, no, go ahead. What's the analogy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you mess with the boys. Well, yeah, I don't know. Well, I've heard you make comments about your piece before. Yeah, it's not the best. Okay. I mean, here's the deal. My, like, my penis... <laughs> all jokes aside... My we're penis. Six minutes and thirty eight seconds. Yeah. That we're talking about Taylor's I, dick. I like to think we're right on par with okay, our podcast. Good, 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 like good, this good. is the trajectory usually goes up. My penis is not big by any means. Is it? I don't look at it. I go, yeah, you know, I don't fucking yeah. But I will say that it's super approachable. Yeah, it's very handsome. Yeah, good. It doesn't have like a misshapen thing at the tip. It stays nice and pink, and then gets a little darker towards the end. And it just kind of was. Now I'm saying hey, it. Now I'm different now. Handsome, I didn't want to like Handsome has a little bit of like masculinity no, and size. To he it. stands up straight. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're gonna say handsome, the way you're describing, it, I'm thinking hey, he's adorable. He's cute. He's approachable. I was voted most yeah, huggable short in high school. Can't be handsome. Uh, yeah, most That's huggable not true. in life. No, I, I, agree, I agree with that. Just, They're not Brad, uh, handsome. Brad Pitt, I agree with that. Tom Cruise. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, people all these John guys are Hamm under six foot. Handsome. Huh? Uh, people say like John Hamm and Vince Vaughn are handsome. They're yeah, like no, they're not really that handsome. Tall they have trees. great personalities, which makes them more handsome. Their personalities make them pretty, like I better. Know, but nobody says Tom Cruise is so handsome. I think people used to before they find out about Scientology. Or people or were the, all about or platform eyes. shoes, dude. That's what I'm saying. No, the movies, I'm, everybody looks like you know here, handsome and stuff. Here's what I'm saying. I've never pulled my pants down with a woman involved, and she'll go, "Ooh." They've always gone, "Wow, that's really nice to see." It's really like the, it's like a dinner date. It's something you marry. Like my penis is not like that. Well, so what are you? Like a what do you, do you take a moment with every? Go, hold on a second. Because if the football coach knows you're going two and fourteen, they don't tell you that in camp, right? I'm not, I'm arguing. Oh, I see what you're point. saying. Like I'm saying, like you're saying, I'm not saying they thought they're not embarrassing. Gonna... But I don't think them not laughing. You know what I mean? Like no, what, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Well, yeah. hey, what I'm wondering is, do you take a moment with every chick just to like pull down your pants and yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it have a real dog? Yes. I dim the lights. I dim the lights. <laughs> every chick's like, dog. oh wow, that that looks that looks awesome. <laughs> Dude. It's like, well, what are, yep. Where are we at in this moment? <laughs> no, it's, you don't do that. We get a good kiss in. Touch the neck a little bit, rub the boobies, do 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 do, change okay, the, so, change the so tits. So we were at four. How do you point? rub the? And then how I do you say, rub the tits? And I fucking say, are you ready? How do you rub the tits? Do, 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 do. It's like changing radio, baby. <laughs> do, do, do. Come on, baby. I rip it four point. I, do, I do, dim do, the do, lights do. real fucking nice. I light a candle and I always have lavender. And I, I go, are you ready? And they go, for what? And I go, lavender. for this. Lavender to go to like sleep. Like an aphrodisiac or something. No, you it's calming. That? No, it is calming. I'm gonna rub this lavender. What are you doing? I don't know. 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 I I'm going to rub the lavender on the bottom of your feet. And we're going to fall asleep. This is when I was together. single, by the way. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. wife now, it's like, hey, do you want to do this? She's it's like, yeah, let's do this. And we're kind of just like, dude, it's you know, get after each other. You on our finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucking pull my pants and I say, "What do you think?" So foreplay. That's yeah. If you're if you if you proud of doing that, which everybody should be. That's you a like very it? important. Yeah, skill. but when I brought up foreplay, you kind of were like foreplay. Well, if you lead, no, if you lead with the so bad for your if wife. You lead with the foreplay. Yeah, Chris no, doesn't do foreplay. Believe me, you I'm, don't fuck around with everything's foreplay. good. You want me to do what? Uh, He's like, you want me to go down there? You don't get a jaw like that and not be decent all at foreplay. That's all a lot of fucking work. All I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all I'm saying is when you lead with the foreplay, you're like a. You're like a receiver that can't run, and you're like, I'm really good in traffic, or like, I'm a good route runner yeah. first. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, you know, I can create a little kills. bit of separation. Speed True. Kills. That's all. Larry Fitzgerald, but yeah. yeah. Well, Hall Great of Fame. You might, be, you might be Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, I no, am. You might be Hall of Fame. Because, dude, here's, your skill set. here's what I'm telling you. Like, when I have sex. <laughs> That's not something I thought I was going to hear. Let me just say, when I have sex, yeah. uh -huh. nothing else in the world matters. Yeah. Wait, back, this is back me. in the day. This is life right now. Oh, right now. So you're taking all that time. Feeling, okay. You're I, present. I'm sitting there like, hey, when when can I? When can I fucking dive down? Get me a snorkel. Get me a turkey sandwich. I'm fucking going in there for a while. You won't see me, but you'll know I'm there. That type of mentality. Dog, yeah. he, he sounds like a high motor guy. Oh, 100%, dude. I'm the, I'm the world like content. <laughs> I'm a world content, dude. I'm a core four guy. Had a lot of effort. Hey, got, I'm a got, team player, too. I'm down there. I'm talking to boys up. Hey, got, how we doing? Hey, too, I didn't right? like what PMT, uh, PFT did to you. That was some bullshit. Yeah, because dude. it's one thing. Caught him on an like, exhale. You got you all saw he did. Totally right, caught, caught him on an exhale. exhale. And you talk about Tom Cruise and all these people on the beach. When you see, like, a beautiful actress or a handsome actor... And you see their beach picture. How does that look? Not great. Yeah. Right? right? Like if you Google. That is true. That's fill in the blank on the beach. If you really want to know. Like, what's sure. like? Uh, Google Dwayne Johnson on the beach. Well, <laughs> I can tell you this about Dwayne Johnson. 
is a guy that's enormous. <laughs> yeah, he's big on the beach too. Yeah, he looks good on the beach as well. Here. Well, he did a. It's not fair because he did a a lifeguarding movie. Yeah, dude, Baywatch. Every yeah, movie whatever does it's called. Yeah, something to do with him. Just hey, that movie low-key slapped, though. I'm not going to be honest. Slap. Yeah, I thought it was good. One of the top five beach movie of all time? No. So. Off the top of my head, right away, no. Point absolutely break. not. Point Break is up there. There's a movie about a penguin surfing that I think is probably better than that. Surf's Up. That's a fucking great movie, dude. The D-Day scene in Saving Private Ryan, maybe. Yeah. So uh, maybe that counts. The movie like, The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is, I think, underrated. But Where I are we putting Jaws? Thing. Jaws is up there. Jaws dude. is probably number one. Jaws has got to be up there. Ooh, dude, but Jaws will fuck. Who's that, Leo? Yeah, you caught Leo on an XL saying, right there. Dude, like, like, no question. My that, like, no me, question. Like, my wife would leave me for Leonardo DiCaprio. No questions asked. Right. But I, like, I might see them walking down the beach and be like, I'm not, I don't even feel threatened by that interaction. Yeah. It's right. Like, no problem. Look at his name wasn't zero Leo. shoulders, zero pecs, zero anything else, bro, except that belly. Yeah, dude. Like so. At that moment, Leo, we got to be on is, Everyone loves Leo. Him, you caught Will Compton on the beach. That's all it was. But I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm like more of a stout, like a stocky. You know what I'm saying? We've talked about this all the time on the show. When you go to this place's website, you go to Duke Cannon's website, you go to their Instagram, you look at you go, this, there's no way this is about shampoo or facial stuff or deodorants or any of that stuff, hairstyling. This is just a meme. This is a meme thing. It's just hilarious. Go follow Duke They're Cannon and all that. But, and if you don't want to just follow them on social medias and you want to feel a little bit better about yourself when you get a scent, I would go and check them out and look at their thick body wash, their hair wash, hairstyling, beard care. We've talked about it all the time. Your boy tries his, his damnedest to get better beard. And I use the beard care. Hopefully it's going to help a little more, but I don't think that's what it's it for. It looks better. It does, it right? Does, it's it up better. a little bit. And a little facial skin care. I know the summer's right around the corner, as Jackie told us, to make sure that you jump in, you know, take care of that face so you don't turn into a leathery mess as summer approaches. Go check out Duke Cannon at any Target or on DukeCannon.com. Use code BUSTIN for 15% off your first order. It's going to make you feel things you've never felt before. Feeling it right now. Yeah, the deodorant. Yeah. It's unreal. Little, and subscribe uh, and rate five stars of the boys. Please, God. Now, do you want to explain the knee, the knee sleeve to me? Is that like an ironic <laughs> thing? No, so what had happened was... <laughs> What happened was the boy caught a little bit of inflammation in the knee, so I'm trying to keep it down. What happened? You know what I'm but saying? But not at your age. What are you, what are you talking mean? about? He's 32. He's yeah, 33 right, in right. September. You know what? You know what's funny? You know what's funny? You know what's funny as fuck? The day you realize you're old in the NFL is the day you have to start controlling the swelling in your knee and you didn't do anything to it. Damn. Uh, like you yeah, just I would walk agree with in that. the building He's and you're right, like, man. damn, dude, I have a knee problem. Like, just for being old. Didn't, yeah. There's no loose body in there. I didn't tear yeah. my ACL. Another thing that's fucked up about being old in the NFL is you're not old in life. So it's this weird mental fuck you're getting the whole so time. So people are yeah. old and every, everybody like, else is like, dude, you're not yeah. fucking old. It's so like, that's oh, the mind fuck like of that. retirement. I truly believe a lot of why guys struggle is like you're like the only person experiencing what you're experiencing. Yeah. Which is you don't have to work if you're lucky. Um, you, you, you're old as fuck compared to all your peers. They also have a 10-year head start whatever industry they join. So I think guys, like, really struggle with the fact, like, who the fuck am I, dude? Like, mm -hmm. I think that's the part about being old in the NFL that really sucks, to your point. I think it's a great point. Yeah, that's... He's too high to talk retirement. Will he? Yeah, yeah I was just trying. He's, I mean, just, he's, that's, he, that's, he's that's, high that's, enough that's, to be retired a, right now. That was a, uh, that was a great point. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at him like, I don't know what you want me to follow with. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, just, I, I wonder. Too, by the way, I'd pass the test, it, no problem. Right now? Yes. Come what, on. A, a, a drug test? Yeah. Well, they, 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 um, they changed the, they the changed gamma the meters or whatever they are. Yeah. yeah it went up much, to like. For guys that, like, you know, like, it's just, yeah, it's, guys have it good now. And I'm, I'm not hating, you know. Yeah, but that's a very, that's a very much like back in my day starter. I know. And, and I said, I'm not hating. You got to finish yeah. with, and I'm not hating. Which yeah. A lot of the old guys don't do when they're like, People get paid too much these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're proactive about uh, using it in the NFL, right? Not proactive, not proactive, but like you spoke on it, right? Well, I talk, I I let it slip talking to Dan. Like when Patrick. people talk about yeah. when people talk about Chris Lombard, oh, that's a dude who talks about smoking. I know weed. that sucks, dude. I hate it. Bo Allen was at my golf tournament this weekend, and his favorite joke is, "You hear Chris smokes weed?" You know, <laughs> like it's become like a thing. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's kind of fucking lame. I hate that. Pink Whitney, I see Pink Whitney. Shout out to our boy. Uh, yeah, shout out to Ryan Whitney. Ryan Whitney, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Those dudes do kill it. They came on the podcast. We need to get Paul on here for real like, on the Has bus. Paul not been on the bus. He's been on. I was in Arizona. Will came out. And we did like a couple of Arizona pods. Yeah, but like there's just a different vibe when you're on the bus. Yeah, you know, no, instead of like a Zoom, Zoom thing. Sucks, dude, Zoom sucks, and anywhere other than being on the bus sucks because 
this is what makes us us. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like the full, it's the full fucking. What do you guys feel like you when know. you do a Zoom interview? Are you just like this? It's just like, we talk about it all the time. Uh, f- feel free to talk whenever you want, Will. I just know that, you know, it can be well, kind there's, of there. there's literally, when he says the last word, you're saying the first word. So okay, go ahead, go ahead. I also feel like our line of sight. Like no, you, you, were, you already started. Yeah. I think when the, the most frustrating thing about a Zoom is like when Will and I sit here and let's say we don't have a guest that's like as outstanding as you are, where like you're going to put some word count in. And I got to ask a question. And then you're answering that question. While you're answering that question, me and Will, if we're on the bus, it's easy for us to figure out, okay, this Will's going to ask the next question. Yeah. I'm going to ask the next question. Yeah. But if you're on Zoom, you're kind of like sitting there hoping. And then sometimes there's that long pause after you yeah. answer. And then one of we both go in at the same time. I was like, oh, fuck, the other person's not going to ask a question. Yeah. And then there's the other time where you right away, both of us try to ask a question. It's just, it's, it's fucking awkward. awkward. It's, it's not muddy. You can't like... Dap the person up, give them a yeah. hug before you talk. You know, like you greet Make people them feel here. comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like that's a real thing, you know. And it, it, yeah, like being on Zoom sucks. And like starting a podcast in the middle of fucking pandemic. Right. I feel like that's like getting drafted by the Lions. You oh, know what I mean, like shout out to Aiden yeah. Hutchinson or the kid from Oregon. <laughs> yeah, who's going to Detroit? <laughs> yeah. yeah Welcome but, to Detroit. Hey, well, I'm actually yeah. still to talk about that, but keep going. Yeah, no, but I just think it's like a tough start. And so kudos to you guys and figuring out a way that you could do this. I think is really sweet. Because, like, Nashville is, like, a cool place that cool people come through. You may not get, like, all Hollywood guests if you had, like, a Hollywood. No, but I mean, like, you might not get your, like, actors that come through Nashville all the time. But you can still get really dope people. You get country stars, athletes, all that stuff. And it's a cool place to, like, visit. Like, people people love coming here. People love coming. Like, when I heard, like, yeah, like, if you were in uh, Ames, Iowa... Like, I'm not coming to the bus. Right. No offense right. to Ames, Iowa. I don't know why I just took a shot at Ames, Iowa. Yeah, no, it's all right. Ames just chilling, just a straight bullet. I'm going to be the headline of their news tomorrow. <laughs> Chris Long. Like, yeah, Chris Long, sm- weed smoker Chris Long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shot at Ames, Iowa. Devil's lettuce Left enjoyer. Wing, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Left they're gonna wing be just, activists. They're going to be doing Left voodoo to me in their yeah, mega Yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Left wing activists. I don't get it. But oh, that's yeah. funny as fuck, but yeah. Red state. Oh, it's red state here? Yeah, Iowa. I'm not as political as you guys. <laughs> hey, I tell you, Will Willie is. Willie always puts it on me when we're in the airport with my mask off, but he's every time he's got to put his on, he's funny. bitching. He's so mad. But mask he's fucking, is he's like ma- fucking libtard. Mask, put his mask, mask on. Mask is not po- politics to me. Like it's just like some people are afraid. I'm gonna be as respectful as I can uh-huh. and keep it moving. Like I don't wear a mask like anymore. But yeah, I go in some stores and they're like mask up and then i'm just like i'm gonna put it on so like, or like let me take it out of my bar or let me run it i just hate people making it. people uncomfortable yeah you know what i mean except oh, my, my bro w- or it's just employees. it's just not that serious like if these people are taking it that serious around me and they want me to have a mask on like all yeah, right dude. Yeah, like, yeah. How, how prideful do you have to be <laughs> right. i would be like no fuck your yeah, like, i understand fuck your fears. if you like under you know your you breath fucking stupid, bro. you know that shit doesn't work yeah, right? the people running people down running people down in grocery stores i'm like dude this is wow right incredible like, you I have know. a gun on your hip because you're, like, you know, the, the small chance that you have to get in a shootout. But the person can't protect themselves that if they have an underlying cause. little to cost. no chance, so I was bro. Like, I was like, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, you took us to politics, bro. I don't think I did, did I? I, don't, I didn't. He did. Uh, I I you did, yeah, yeah, because you brought up Red Iowa. Red State, Iowa. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I did do you that. Smoked. That's all right. You, it's okay. Do that. You're also tired from being a dad. Hey, dude. I want, I'm you, really, I'm not. Can you, can you step into my 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 my, my refrigerator? refrigerator? Yeah. Dude, that was uh, so fucking everybody funny. has a kid, dude. That shit was so like, these fucking kid funny, dude. Are just out of control, it man. Doesn't matter, bro. Yeah, Dad, dude, or the kid monetize like, the, the baby. Christ, do I get a? Do I get equity in this fucking uh, in busting with the boys? Oh, that man? blue. Oh, oh, that baby? blue light. Yeah, yeah, up at home. Fun one day, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be able to point to it. This is how we built this whole thing up. Hey, but how does it feel, dude? Really? Being a dad. Yeah. Good and bad. Yeah. Like it's up and down, right? Rhymes. Hey, that's real as fuck. <laughs> like, that, no, though, I mean, that is, like, there's there's some dog moments, right? Like, to where she's not going to sleep, or you get the domino effect of you and your wife both being very tired, and you know in your mind, like, you like you said, everybody's experiencing their own thing. Like, yeah. I'm going through my day, so I think about my stress. She's going through her yeah. day, and then I'm like, damn, she has to stay at home all day, lose her completely, completely change her identity, and then trying to be a mother and staying at home all the time while I go out a couple right. times and do, like, cool shit. Yeah, the worst is, like, hey, can I go to the bar? Right, right. Or somebody's like, yeah, I thought like there's none of that. Like, yeah, if you're like, it depends on how you ask, I feel like. Oh, right. Bro. But it's just, it's like one of those things where it's, it's awesome when you, you're able to have all that perspective. And then it's tough, like, when you have those domino days where you're both extremely tired and you're like, oh, are you going to go get the kid? Like, oh, I've been doing X, Y, and Z type of thing. That's a great point. But so up and down. 
I'm not doing that. That's a great point thing. I was gonna fuck with you. Uh, honestly, <laughs> point. honestly, like early on, I feel like you're useless as a dad, dude. Like, and so I'm impressed that you're doing things, but like, I just felt like I stood around a lot and tried not to fuck up the process. Like the first, yeah, I mean, three months. So you wait till the fun part. Like everybody yeah. talked, yeah, everybody talks about that. I was talking part, about dude. somebody who's their kid just turned like six months or something. Like, oh, it's like it's, it gets better. So tell me this: What do you guys think about this? What do you think about like people that fucking like we make content? At some point, we're gonna look back at it and be like, we were fucking lame, mm -hmm. and our kids will for sure. Yeah. See, I don't think that way. You don't think that way? Oh, no. I, I think like, ah! truly in my mind, I'm I like, know. yo, <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't think that way. Scroll, a scroll back on all these photos and like know who her old man was, like yeah. what he yeah, was into, exactly all like, who he this was. Dude didn't give a I fuck sometimes, yeah, like yeah. didn't take shit too seriously. Yeah, yeah. Had a great time, was big yeah. in the moments. Like I think it's gonna be dope. I think if I was your kid, I'd think you were cool. I appreciate yeah, dude, that, man. Yeah, yeah, like, to me, like, you do with your dad. Yeah, I do. I do. No question. So no it's question. like one of those things. And you probably wish there were more archives of just even Broken funnier arrow. stuff or lame stuff to where you can be like, oh, my Fire dad rips. Storm. Yeah, like, no, I, you're right, though. Honestly, I wish they had, like, my dad had a podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know who my dad was. Like, but then you really learn more about your parents when you talk to their buddies. Yeah, you start yeah, 100%. Their, their buddies drunk. <laughs> Even better, you get their buddies a little stoned because it's much stronger now. Yeah. But you get a buddy of your dad stoned and let him just go and tell you the stories about your dad. That's how you get to know your dad. If he had played now, I feel like I'd, I'd get to know my dad a lot more like when he was 23. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have interviews. They just didn't, like, follow people around with cameras. There weren't cell phones. Like, yeah. So, I mean, our kids are going to know us really fucking well. No doubt. But I feel like when your dad played and all that, like, what a time to get away with shit. Yeah, no question. You know what I'm saying? What a fucking time to be out there. Dude, he was on the Raiders, whatever. bro. Oh. Like, the Oakland Raiders. Like, thank Doing God crazy there shit. were no fucking... You know when you watched um, uh, Any Given Sunday and Lawrence Taylor's on the roof with the chainsaw? Yeah. I remember being like, that's not... We don't do that. Like, it's yeah. unrealistic. But maybe they did in the 80s. Maybe. Right. How do we know? Like, Lyle Alzado? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, this shit's stories. fucking insane. Yeah. I'm sure he was a, he was a wild man. Part of the reason why number, we're number 77. Yeah. I think the way my dad put it was like, there was a point in time where I think Lyle was very confident that he could beat up anybody on the planet. And like, I wasn't so sure either. Didn't he do an exhibition against Muhammad or something like that? Like, yeah. You got to just, even if it's not true, like yeah. he had that attitude and he was big and he was yeah. strong and he had assistance. Yeah. You know? But he's a fucking, he was like, just, he's the perfect example of like, if a dude like that, played now yeah it'd be like johnny manzel on steroids no not question. to take any shot at johnny manzel i'm just saying like johnny partied a lot and it was exposed because of the time he lived in and i think the reason i respect johnny though is because mm -hmm. he owns it he does he was on. he came on here and he really owned it he yeah. talked about he wouldn't change a thing which i don't know how much i would agree with that yeah like would you really not change anything but he owned it he was apologetic he felt bad for the like the browns franchise He's like yeah i kind of i fucked them over yeah. And he, like, the way he has handled this they're business. Getting line, bro. There's yeah. a whole fucking... Right, there's a slew. There's a the Browns have had, had a tough... All over exactly. It. Duct tape jersey yeah. with all yeah. Um, That's why I think people are hard on Baker. But he didn't... I think their their situations are different, Baker and because of Johnny. Johnny. No, but I, I just think, like, like he's going to end up being one of the most hated Browns quarterbacks. But of all yeah, the duct tape did such names amazing, on the exactly. back of that jersey, he's probably, the like, one of the best in 20 years. He probably is the best in That's 20 years. Point. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, listen. Like and, Joe Thomas played for 10 years and had 12 different quarterbacks. And I'm not putting him on a pedestal. I'm not saying he's like an elite quarterback or anything, but nobody hated Baker until he didn't play well. I, I don't think Baker True. the person, I've never heard of Baker the person being a bad guy until he started playing. That's right. the thing about the NFL. You can be whoever you want until you play poorly. Mm -hmm. When you play poorly, people stop laughing at your jokes. Right. They stop laughing they at those stay, progressive commercials. They, like they, he's on all of them. Yeah, which, you know what what I mean? pretty, they're Even pretty the decent. Dudes in yeah. the locker room, you know, like yeah. that's tough. And you you've been through it. You've been hurt. Like yeah. you, you know, you went through your shit. It's fucking tough. It, it's tough, especially when you walk in that locker room. And you look around. You're like, I wonder if these guys even respect me anymore. It's the you big go through dude. those type of situations. <sighs> It's fucking hard because especially if you're up here at one point in your career and then you get knocked down, like my situation, and then you're playing that next year and you're kind of just looking around like, damn, like you feel like you just kind of lost respect from and like your anything, there's just the only like opinion that really matters. Like anything else, you're probably projecting. Oh, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So in your head, but like that's the game that they play in the NFL. Like they don't even need to put pressure on you to come back. The biggest pressure on you to come back is the guys I pass in the hallway. Yeah. Like going to practice. 
and I got fucking grays on, and I'm walking mm. to the. I remember like durability was not an issue for me. Played in, I, you know, I said played in a hundred games in a row, not a problem. Never missed a practice, nothing. Mm. Got rolled up on holding up Phil Loadhalt week one of uh, 2014. I was a captain. Mm. Next thing you know, I'm walking through the halls wondering if people even like me, bro. Right. It's a weird fucking thing, dude. It's a weird deal. And, and it happens to the best players in the league. Like, yeah. So I think, you know, talking about Baker or whoever, it's just like, it's a total what have you done for me lately league. Mm -hmm. And, you know, playing hurts probably not a good idea either. Well, and that's yeah, what happened. Torres, um, was it his full rotator cuff, right? Yeah, and you Labrum? think you're going to get all this respect. Dude, well, I, so here, here's where there, it, yeah. it might, might be a thing. It's like, like it's honorable, Baker, right, but... When Baker, like, tore his labrum, you think the players would respect that. Over, I, you know, eventually the coaches are going to be like, oh, you know, if you're going to play, you're going to play. You better play well. There's right. a standard. But I feel like if if you tore your labrum and you're playing, you might not be playing great. I'm like, damn, the boy's really doing it, though. Mm -hmm. Like, he's giving it all. He's not bitching out and just sitting out, which is kind of cool. Well, that's what I would say, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, like, people forget. Like, yeah. by week, by the eighth week, you're back in. People are like, oh, he's good now. But, like, you're not. That injury doesn't go away the rest of the year. So I do think, like, you yeah, know. And that people forget once the farther, like you're saying, like week eight. Like, even the next year, people don't even remember that you're playing hurt. You're just judged Dude, not on at all. And your stats and everything else. And, and the, or, the organization. Talking, talk about, well, I only had X amount of catches, blah, 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 and not even remember the injury. Yeah, dude. And, and to, like, the organization forgets. Like, you know what I mean? Quick. And you're like, man, if I fucking play hurt, they're going to look out for me next year. No, no, they're not. No, dude. bro. I tore my PCL. It might have been. Were you, it might have been one of the years you were on uh, Philly. Yeah, I can't remember, but I tore my PCL. And I Quite was, the, hey, big time shit talker when he was on Philly. I was. You were. Yeah. To who? To everyone on my offensive really? line when we played. It was the year after you guys awesome. won the Super Bowl. But go ahead. I will. I'll, I'll, really? I'll, we'll bookmark that. Year after. We'll bookmark year that. After, right. Yeah. Yeah, but I was just talking Hold on, hey, we'll, let, let, we'll tell the story. The, on the, in the tell real quick. I was talking about, tell it. me the PCL story when we go here, because I'm shocked so, by that. Who's going first? But I ch I change. <laughs> I'm like, not me, dude. I was just going to say to your point of like, they're going to take care of you the next year. Like, it was 16. Let's just say it was 16. Yeah. I tore my PCL against Philly. Sure. And I'm back practicing on the ninth day from tearing my PCL. A right. Huge, massive brace, you know. Doing whatever I can off the field to get back as quickly as possible on the field. Yeah. Did some stuff that I don't even ask questions on. Yeah. So I can get out there and play because we played oh, on you Monday. Did, did stuff you didn't ask questions on? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Early uh, prostate check? Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? No, no like, like, to, get, to get my knee right. Oh, got it, got, my it, got it, got it, got it. Because we played a Monday night game, and the backup blew a couple things, and you just feel like sitting on there. You feel standing there on the sideline and everything else, and Coach would be like, oh, man, we need you out there if we get you to just call the defense. All this different stuff, right? Yeah, we just need you to do that. Right, but you're in your own head doing whatever it takes to get back on. You think it's extremely honorable, All the everybody in the locker room, everybody in that moment. Talks about how, you know, you're like a savage, you're a monster. Like, right. I can't believe you're doing this. Right. And I play, like, the last three games, and we missed that last week. It was when the New York Giants, they all flew to Miami yep. to get on that boat, and then they came and beat us by, like, one point or a couple the points. The boat year. The boat year, bro. And so we didn't get in. I got bad news for people, year. by the way. Players are drunk as fuck in their home city, too. Absolutely. So like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that was, uh, we didn't play into the playoffs then. Yeah. So I was going into my restricted free agent year, and you're kind of thinking, like, they might take care of you with a second tender yeah. or contract ex extension because you've been a captain and a starter for the team. Wrong. All of this stuff played, played when he, he plays when he's hurt. Yeah. He does all this stuff. He gets yeah. back on the field as quickly as possible. He sacrifices for the team. Yep. Bro, they don't give a fuck about that. They just use it against you because you are what your film is. It's a business. So no. When you're out there limping around with one tackle in the last, in the final two games of the year, I only had like one or two tackles. So I wanted to call the defense and be honorable. Like they use that you shit against you. can't lead either from the back. So like, right. you know, like when I came back from that injury in 14, I shouldn't have come back. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it changed my career forever. I got lucky. I wound up on top with everything, but like yeah. I was lucky. Like, I easily could have signed with the wrong team and right. then been bitter the rest of my life. But I played hurt. Part of it was because I loved my coach, Jeff Fisher, and I, I wanted to play for him, too. Guy, I wanted to play. Dude. I love Jeff Fisher, yep. dude. Um, and Jeff, like, didn't pressure me to play. Like, in fact, there was a, a game where I went to the front of the plane. We are on the way to San Diego, and I, like, could not walk, dude. But I just wanted to play like that. Like, insecurity drove you to play. Yeah. And... I remember, like, I tried to argue with Jeff at the front of the plane. He was like, you're not playing. So I appreciated him taking care of me. 
but but like they can only do so much to stop you from yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you put bad tape out there and that follows you. You know what I mean? So I was just like, if if a, if I had to give a young player um, advice, and I know everybody's situation is different, like, don't do it. Mm -hmm. unless, unless it's a big situation. Like a, you're, you well, know, you you're in the job playoffs security, or Super Bowl well, you or something. You have your like money. That. Yeah, it, it always depends on where you're at in your career. Like, I rolled my ankle my for my rookie year, and we were, it was a 2-14 and 14 year. Yeah. It was like week 12. You've been through one. Yeah, it you was were like bad. Yeah, were oh, bad. yeah. With 2-14, yeah. and 3-13 and 13 the first two years. Work. Tough. And so... Um, but I called my agent. I'm like, yo, I got to play. Yeah. He's like, how can you set? I'm like, no. Like, this shit, I have to splint it or something. And my agent's like, dude, you you were a first-round pick. I'm like, yeah, but I owe this team. And he's like, you guys aren't going to make the playoffs. It, that, you guys are probably going to have the first or second pick in the draft. Like, what are you doing? Ben Simmons energy. And they had to like, yeah, yeah, yeah dude, don't put that on me. But he had to like legit talk me into, yeah. like, you should not play. Like, do not play. This is not smart for your career. Or wrong. Business it's your first year. He's like, it's your, and then, and it's your first year in the league. So you don't know, like you're still in college. Wish, low key. You're not that guy where you have a first round attitude. Like, mm. you know, sometimes I wish like I had more of a first round attitude. Where I would just like you know just boss people around and do what I wanted to do, and not you really wish you were like, had yeah, that a little bit. Maybe I'd have protected myself better in certain situations. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, but the flip side of it is like not being that guy. People fuck with you, mm -hmm. and you know, like the one time it did pay off, I played with a high ankle my contract year. We were two and fourteen, and I was shooting that thing up. Yeah, to get, and that was the best year I ever had. And so, like, the trade off of that is my ankle was probably never the same. Mm -hmm. But I will take the money. Yeah. They broke me off. So, like, mission yeah. accomplished. I'm sitting here looking at a house right now. I'm like, thanks to playing on a high ankle. You know, right, I exactly. Cash. So, there are, it's a give and take. You got, it it's is. like a dance. You got to, you know. But it's all, is it also like for players, it can't be a double edged sword. Then I'm not saying which side I'm on. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to take the risk of doing the high ankle sprain and playing that way, then if you're 40, 42, 43 years old and your ankle's fucked up now, like, you can't bitch at that because you like you you made the choice too. Yeah, well, that was but, but that more, I don't that I don't know all the details though. when it comes to people getting their money and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's all. It's all, it's all way different. Right, all way right. way way different. But but I will say, um, yeah, like me personally, I can only speak for myself. Like I've never once looked back at my trainers and been like mad at them. Mm -hmm. You know, even when they were wrong about stuff. Like because usually I was ready to do that. Like I, you know, I was. Jumping out of the airplane, dude. Like, we, yeah. were, we were like, fuck it, let's do this. So, um, you know, I think trainers in the NFL could do a better job of, like, stopping players from themselves. But that's not in their best interest because well, they have pressure from upstairs. Exactly. Yeah. When's exactly. this guy ready? A huge game. And coaches bro. don't understand, you know, what's going on in players' mm -hmm. bodies. They don't, they don't have time to care or educate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and I get it. The disconnect is real in the NFL. It's almost like they need an an arbitrator to decide when a player comes back, mm. like something like that. Yeah. yeah, but it's just, that's just kind of the game, right? Because like when I was speaking about my thing earlier, right? Like there's like, you're sitting there as the player angry about it because your situation didn't work out. Yeah. But if I look back and think about it, it's, yeah, if you're up there playing GM mode and everything else, like you might love the guy, yeah. but you still got to separate the a personal and the business side you of do. it. And you got to see it for what it is. That's what he looks you like do. on film. I just don't like being he's, lied to. He's got that's a, it. That's just true, don't but lie to me. there's so many games yeah. being played, like yeah. you said, with the trainer thing. You can pressure yeah, They me. can definitely be better. And we all know trainers, yeah. like, we all talk shit yeah. in the offseason, right? Because yeah. we're like, oh, that's why we third party. That's why we outsource and do all this. But if you think about it from the trainer's shoes, like, they got to get the player out on the field as fast as possible. Because like, they keep head, their job. Their head, coaches, their, head coaches, their head coaches in there every it's morning. Total circle talking about, of accountability, play? dude. Right. And everybody's just like... It's like hoping you're playing musical chairs. Like, hopefully I get a chair. Like, I don't want to be the one to fuck this thing up. Right. Whether it, it's the player or the yes. trainer. It's also a massive lack of accountability. Yeah. But it, like, we talk about it all the time on the bus. Like, dudes taking accountability. Like, whether it's them, us, whatever. But, like, it is kind of a finger-pointing game when it comes to being hurt. Because the trainer's trying to save his ass. And we don't really have this issue at the Titans. Todd's awesome. Right, right. Rabel's right, really right, good right, about stuff. Yeah. yeah. Shout, shout out to Reggie Scott and all my former dude, trainers. They, dude. I, and I'm telling you, it's good. It's just this is just how it works. Like I'm not coming yeah. at anybody of the Titans because I think they're outstanding. Yeah. But it is like a it can turn into like that fucking the office where everyone's yeah, kind of yeah, doing yeah, this. That's a really good one. It's like, well, he yeah. And he's like, well, he, yeah. and it's, but not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, we're, we're all worried about, we're all worried about our money. building, dude. There, yeah. Accountability in a football building is rare when people aren't looking to blame everybody else. And we've all done it in our careers and shit. Like, you look elsewhere when shit, because 
uh, especially you having been through a two and 14 year, a mm -hmm. three and 13 year. I think the first eight game or eight years of my career, I think I won like 40 games or something in St. Louis. Like we seven and nine was like, damn, we're, we might go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, oh, we're on the up and up boys. Being, being on those teams, dude, it's like, it's like run for cover. Cause like, you know, on those teams, firings are inevitable. You know, cuts are inevitable. You know, that, like you're not even sure if the owner cares sometimes, mm -hmm. like based on the signings. So everybody's just like, their assholes are so tight. We used to call it like panic, like upstairs, they're panicking. What's mm -hmm. the panic meter today? After a loss, yeah. the whole thing, you can feel it in a football building. It's oh, the most as stressful. a player too, you can for sure feel it. And there's guys that have that uh, vibe more than others. Yeah. Like I know dudes on, on our team who like low key have like a great pulse on what's going on in the building. And there's guys like me who are just like, hey, I, I got to focus on my own shit. But you, you know, know it's when coaches come in the meeting room and y'all play good that you lost and they're just motherfucking people so people can hear them in the hallway. Yeah. Like that's you know. the shit. That's the part of the, the business that I hate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. And Everybody's out the, in their own self-interest. Well, just be real, dude. Like we, we played well in a loss. We'll try to win next time. Right. Like they get paid too. Well, you played shitty in a win. Right. Like, yeah. Be real. Don't coach off the, the result, you know? Right. Because so about trying, me you know. shit talking, I shit talked you guys. No, you didn't shit talk me, but it was right because it was 2017, right when we played. 18, and we blew 18. that game. We played terrible. It well, was awful. we we also didn't play very well. Well, you, 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 you just, can imagine how bad we played. We jumped out like two touchdowns up on you. Yeah, and we came back and won that thing. Was it overtime or was it the last drive? Yeah, overtime, dude. Really? Well, I remember you because I don't think oh, wait, Jack. Is this, is this your? I was on the squad. This was this 18. was dinosaur, Chris. And, <laughs> yeah, he, and and you were playing uh, strictly over the right tackle because I was going against That's your right. your rookie Derek. from the Vols, Derek Bar we talking about Derek Barrett, my guy Barnett, Barnett, and he and you and him were getting into it. Yeah, and here's the thing about Derek Barnett. I will say this for any Philly fans listening: I love that motherfucker, and I would fight with him any day because mm. he at least will fucking scrap. He'll go, and I, you know, I think he's gotten had a hard time up there. But you know, he's like in your Philly's shit. Philly's a tough yeah. place, though, dude. Philly yeah. is a Philly's a place you look at. Like, it literally looks like a war zone, like Libya or some shit like that, where it's just like, oh, my God. Like, th people are just... Like, Has he not been to Philadelphia, dude? Bro. Have you no, not I'm been not talking about the city. I'm oh, talking about... Like, I, no, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the fan base. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah I got it. Not going, <laughs> when shit's not going right... <laughs> like, Holy oh, shit. That place is a dump. And low-key, I'm not a huge fan of Philly, Philly. It's a but, great city, dude. Nah, nah, hey, I'm all right. Hey, why don't we do something? I shouldn't have said Libya. Why don't you come up there and hang with a couple? I Aubrey, shouldn't have said that. Lane, Kelsey, me. No, that'd be outstanding. Fucking, we'll have a great weekend. And obviously, playoff Willie's coming. Yeah, but, but like, I'll be there. But let me let I'll me. Hey, I'm not even during football season. Hey, I gotta write this wrong real quick. Let me let me land this plane yeah. so Philadelphia oh, fans don't hit me for life. Oh, yeah. I think when you watch when you're at the stadium and you see like the fans will openly get mad at your own team, mm -hmm. their own team. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, it's just fucking a war zone out here. That's it's crazy. You, that's what you want. No, you do. It's, it's, you do. But it's, it's like fucking the guy wild. That, you know, Philly um, fan bases, the Philly fan there base. jail inside the stadium. Not anymore, Oh, they had dude. a jail inside like the stadium. Old, dude. I tell you what Philly is. Women also smoke old, cigarettes bro. and drank pregnant. Things get over change, it. Dude. Like, yeah. anyways, I just feel like Philly, uh, Philly fandom, like that fan base is kind of like, the metaphor I would have would be that player in your team that you're like, I fucking hated him mm. when I didn't play with him, but he's the best teammate to have, dude. Mm. Like, that's what a Philly fan is, dude. Yeah. And like, I know that I was kind of agnostic on it because I wasn't in the NFC East, but I heard a lot of the the talk. But, man, like, that made my, my football career playing there, dude. Like, I'm not even blowing smoke. Like, I love St. Louis. We don't have a team there anymore. Right. It, that's weird to, like, not have some place to go home to. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was kind of, like, NFL homeless. Really? <laughs> Philly, that is true. It felt like Philly adopted me. New England didn't really, and I really fuck with those people. They're cool. But yeah. you're also like wild a, animals. You're another guy. You know, like, in, in New England, like, we were part of a machine. Yeah. So I'm like, what have I done here that anybody else hadn't that done? people are going to be, like, take and be like, okay. No, but they respect you. They're cool. Yeah. And they're knowledgeable. But then Philly, like, you know, basically, we did something they've been waiting for for forever. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's a special city. I love Philly. I think it's, they're just, they're crazy, man. Like, you love to have them out there on Sunday, but you probably hate to have them when you're That's on exactly tour. exactly right. It's really all it is, they're right? Because they're so passionate and so fucking crazy. Like, I always tell people that that was my favorite place to, like, go and play because they hate you so fucking much. Yeah. yeah. If you're winning, like, this year you win the Super Bowl, like, that's the type of city you want to win for. Oh. But when you're losing, like, yeah, life is tough. They travel. You need that speech from Kelsey. The Kelsey I thought speech. he crushed it. He crushed his I thought speech, he crushed dude. it. 
the Chargers went on silent count at home. Mm. And now that was the Chargers in that w- weird little. And Sydney, when they were San Diego, yeah. that small like, little deal. Pa- like Philly fans like packed it, bro. Oh, they rolled deep. NFC East low key reminds me of like uh, old school Big Ten, like Auburn, Alabama, yeah. like historical, like super in it fans. Charter, charter franchise. Yeah, like, they're real, fucking real about deal. it. Yeah, they're about no, it. And because I remember when we went that two and 14 season, Dallas played. Yeah. At our house. And it was like, okay, we got to go silent. Yeah, like, gotta, we, we're not going to be able to, yeah, we can't fucking hear nothing. Here, dude. They're here. When we were in St. Louis, brother, <laughs> like we did not sell, you know, you're from. Yeah. Edward Jones Dome. Shout out to Edward Jones yeah, Dome. Yeah, the weird lighting. Yeah. And listen, for anybody out there listening, like, I love that place. It's a complicated relationship. because Definitely covering your ass on all these people. No. No, but I really not, loved them to death. They're amazing. I didn't do Patriots, that in New they didn't mean, but I love them I to death. I didn't do that in New England. Well, I didn't do that in, New England. Do that in New England if you I'm didn't, have, if you didn't watch, know that. Yeah. No shade, but, you know, like, St. Louis spent eight years there. Yeah. Awesome fans. But, like, we were 1-15, 2-14, and 14, so, like, the stadium wasn't packed. Yeah. Um, Steelers would come in. We'd go on silent count. Fuck, Packers yeah. would come in. We'd go on silent count. Fucking you name it. I think the fucking Titans came in and we nah, went off. I don't know dude. about that now. Not far. Really? Nashville and, you know, St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, but the, also, what years were that? Was that 2009 to... Well, y'all played there one time with, and beat us with uh, the guy from Washington, who I hear is a great kid. The guy from Washington. Oh, the quarterback. The quarterback Locker. Oh, Jake Locker. Locker. He is great. Yeah. He was there my rookie year. He was outstanding. He's a great dude. Great fucking dude. Uh, Loki loved the fact that he just like disappeared into the abyss. No, that's what that's what's just awesome. gone now. Do you ever feel like you wish you did that? Like, well, you're not retired yet, but you're not retired. To, I'll ask myself. Oh no, yeah, ask yourself now. I'm like scanning the room for somebody who's openly retired. Wish you. Openly retired. Okay. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> do you ever feel like when you retire, you want to like not do this? Like just like the podcast like and stuff. Live in a real bus. Like this is kind of a like like live in a real bus somewhere no. and just disappear, dude. Yeah, I would say there's to be cool. I would say yes, but yeah, for sure, I want to disappear off the face of the earth. When to be honest with you, it's the exact opposite. For I about me. have no social footprint. That sounds fucking cool. Some days, doesn't it? I mean, some like, days does, but like thinking Twitter. of thinking of doing the podcast and my relationship, I feel like is so different on Twitter. Like I love Twitter. Yeah, you do. He loves you know the bird. What I mean? Like I have a good time on it. If there, it there was a day where I love Twitter. I see my uh, younger version of myself in you. What happened? What? Where did it go sideways? You just like it. It was a really fun little room, and now it's just like everybody has a fucking opinion, and you know, like. I don't know, dude. I guess there's a party that will grow out of the wanting to banter with the public. Because I think sure. the public opinion stuff is funny. I'm like, when your right, kids get how older. do we have fun I think with When it? your kids get older, I okay. think you stop having time to, like, argue with everybody. Not every day, but, like, or to tweet. Like, you know, it's, like, harder to be, like, I'm sinking into this app, you know, uh, and I have two kids that are only six and three for, like, a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I do feel like sometimes the content's awesome, but you're like, God damn, dude. I'll never be in my 30s again. What if I wake up at 50 and I'm like, I should have just fucking got a bus. Yeah. And disappeared. Well, how long are you on this app to make you feel like you got I'm really not, dude. I just, it, it burns a hole in your pocket. See, I, I don't know, because since my kids are now getting older, four and then almost two, like, especially with my four-year-old, she wants my attention a lot more. Yeah. Like, I, like, designate, like, put times in my head, like, hey, I'll, I'll get home, I'll eat at one o'clock, okay, from one thirty to like two. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack as many tweets as possible. Yeah. And then when the kids go to sleep, I'm gonna spend another half an hour to an hour on that thing, just smack, like get my fucking content numbers up, my right. tweets up, and then I'm kind of out of there. I'm really hard, like I'm tough to do. I'm really bad at doing anything formulaic. Mm. So like, if, yeah, no, I get it. It's difficult formulaic. to do. Yeah, to be like, oh yeah, from from this time of day to yeah. this time of day, being super structured for the point of of engaged scheduled. Gotcha. Will, uh, I don't, like, I don't. The other day was 420, so people gave me shit because of what you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, it's 420, Grizz. How long are you? Like, all that stuff. Yeah. I didn't know it was 420. Seems like you, you, have, seems like you guys have to unpack that a little bit. Yeah. Him being high? No, you coming at him for being high. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that that was sparking That's something. Thing, dude. Yeah. I, 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 I did not know that. I had to deal with Bo Allen this weekend. You know, it's like lame. Like, when you talk about, when you talk about something and you're, like, one of the few people that are talking about it, people make you, like... You're supposed to get like you're cool for it. Mm-hmm. Like I just wish everybody else would talk about it. I think more people are. Like it's like drinking a beer to me. Now it is. Now yeah. it is. But like a couple of years ago, I didn't feel like there were that many players that were talking about Bud. See, or you can think of it like this: like you did it before it was cool. No, but like the problem is, you know? if I saw, if I was sitting here looking at Chris Long talking about weed, 
I'd be like, he's doing it to be cool. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, I'm just you're being doing like too myself. Much. I'm just, right. I can't, you know, I, can't, I don't have a, really a filter. So I was on Dan Patrick and he asked me something. <clears throat> what did he ask you? Do you remember the question was? What, yeah. It probably had to do with it. Some, uh, do people smoke in the NFL? Mm. And like, I don't like to like give numbers or like dry snitch on people. So yeah. I was just kind of like, I mean, I've done it from time to time, you know? Right. And then it became this thing like, uh, there were memes with me uh, sucking a bong with like bloodshot eyes and it said Chris Bong. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> it's hilarious. And then at, for a year, like every fan I met, like at a bar was like, you high? Or like, you want to go? Are you or, high? Like, or you want to go to the fucking alley with me, man? Like, I'm like, yeah, I want to smoke your fucking Reggie weed, like yeah. in the alley, dude. Like, I'm, I'm paranoid. So funny. I'm paranoid talking to you. You think I want to go smoke with you? So yeah. I do think like that's kind of annoying with it. You know what I mean? Like, we yeah. smoke on the pod. Like, Dr. Fax is here. Like, our producers complain about the smell. Um, and podcasting is hard high, too, as you're noticing. I think I've been doing a solid I job. I think you've been doing great, yeah, You've been doing great. But I feel like I'm in it. Like, I feel like, like early on, you were like, fuck, what are we doing? Well, there's uh, a couple times you just ended with a glance. I mean, I'm thinking, oh, I wasn't really listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, dude. Oh, no, my God. Dialed, but honestly, that shit, that shit makes you better at a lot of things. Like, you know, like, you... You know, for me, I'm like, I can relax, focus, kind of like that sort of thing. I got like off. crazy ADHD. Yeah. I'm just all over the place. Yeah, that stuff definitely, I've heard, can help quite a bit for other people. But me. The word on the street is that it can help. Yeah, I heard. Do you have ADHD? Oh, uh, hard. So maybe it could help you. But I have ADHD so bad that when Vrabel was a head, when he was the, like his first year as a head coach, mm -hmm. called me in his office in like November and was like, hey. You should probably go get tested for ADHD. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like that bad. I was like, really? Like you think so? And he's like, yeah. So I went and did it. And like, you're supposed to go through like two or three, like test it off the charts. I test it off the charts, bro. I believe it. She's like, how do you feel about this and this? And I was like, oh, I feel like I would answer the questions or whatever. And like 10 minutes in, she's like, okay, so you have ADHD. And they prescribed me Ritalin or one of those. Mm -hmm. And um, I looked at the, I fucking had the pill and I looked at it and I go, do I want to become that person that is like, changes like myself like does yeah. this change my, me my brain chemically because it's weird to say but i fucking love myself like yeah, i love yeah, yeah. like the way my brain works and i love how i see things and stuff like that and like if i start taking this am i gonna start seeing the world through a different filter that's gotta be cool for yeah fuck, dude. so i never took it ever but i would act like i was on ritalin when I was in the building. So you try to put on a facade that you could actually... I, Google, I literally Googled... Um, yeah, I, I like, legitimately, I'm one of those people, like, if you tell me, like, hey, you can't do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do it. Right. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy and, and, and gay to say, but, like... I think Will I, uh, posted it. I, like, Googled... I Googled, like, side effects of... What's that? I think Will posted it the other day somewhere <laughs> on the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I Googled, like, side effects. Say laugh. He's mad at me. He's no, like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. He comes on the bus and just gives me shit. Fucking hydrating Damn. king, man. Fucking <laughs> okay, hydrating king. I'm sitting here thinking I do got to take a piss. Oh, Go pee then. I gotta pee. You might have a small bladder. Go pee. No, I got a big bladder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, no, I got a big bladder, dude. <laughs> dude, that's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Anyway, I, I didn't take the Ritalin. I, I decided oh. that I was just going to act like I was on Ritalin, and I did for the rest of the year. I think it's better to just raw, raw dog life, man. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Just be who you are. Now, I can't say that for everybody because for some people, it's very disruptive. Not everybody gets to be. Not everybody with ADHD gets to be a child the rest for thirty years. Yeah, you know, nice. Like, like I'm Isn't not saying it doesn't take incredible discipline. No, but you knew what, what you're saying is hundred percent correct. Like our D line room is like a daycare center, dude. Like mm. dudes laying on the floor. Like our Mike Waffle, our D line coach, who was like this former Marine. Yeah, and he had this whole like way of thinking about like a D line brain. Mm -hmm. And he, we got cell phone breaks. We got to sit like in certain periods. We got to lay on the ground. We just talked. We threw things at each other. Yeah, and we made sure we got through the film. Because he knew that everybody was so fucking touched in a way. Dude, it's tough. I had a coach just like that, Russ Grimm, who was, like, he could tell that we were getting, like, just, you know how the season is. It's just fucking long, monotonous. Yeah, it's crazy. And we would go, we'd hit the film, and he'd be like, instead of watching all 65 snaps, he'd be like, pull up those 25 clips. And he'd rip through those clips real quick, and then he'd be like, all right, Ben Jones, Taylor, get on the board. The word is superfluous. And then you would take the word, and you'd have one minute to make as many small words as yeah. you could out of that. yeah. And we would just play and look at YouTube. And we had uh, we had an office lineman, Josh Klein, who was like straight up Josh Klein. out the gate. Yeah. Hardcore ADHD. 
Yeah. Like he wouldn't take his medicine on Saturdays, and we'd all call him Jiggles because he was fucking off the walls. Like, I think could it's not. harder for y'all than us. Yeah, because y'all play a position that 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 you need to be focused, and you you have so many variables in y'all's playbook mm. and what you do from play to play. Like we're like uh, nine technique. Yeah, react. Yeah, but you're you very reactive. <laughs> Oh, is New England super structured? Oh, listen, dude. Like, and I don't, it's a great, it's, the system has worked. When yeah. we were there, oh, we were the yeah. number one scoring defense in the league, and we were not talented. We didn't like, have the best players in the league. Well, the Patriots are never like that. They never have, like, this star-studded cast of, like, they have 10 elite guys on the, on the defense. They yeah. just constantly, the coaching's pretty there incredible. Is, there's Big exactly. Bladder. I got, oh, hey, 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 there's, there's my dog. There's my dog. He's a hydrated yeah. Willie. Let's but go, you, bro. Go to, you go to the Patriots. Okay, let me get like in this mango. Styled actually. in. Which no, one's we're the best talking, one? We're talking those? about scheme in New England and how complicated it is. We were talking about how if you're a D lineman, you really don't need to know much, respectfully. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you need to like if you want to take it to the next level. Where's the safety? Like you know, like what are the tendencies? Like looking at formations. But like honestly, a lot of guys don't do that in the league. Who uh, with who you've played with? Who does and formations and stuff? I'll tell you who does it. Who does not or does? I'm gonna tell you who does it. Okay. Aaron does Don. what? Oh, 100%. Listen, let me tell you something about it. I tell this story a lot. When I was a rookie, when he was a rookie, and this was like three days in, so I figured out that he was a Hall of Famer two days earlier. Yeah. Uh, he fucking, I, I used to like watch film a little bit because, you know, like, I, I'm not that good. <laughs> so, um, second overall pick. Yeah, but not that yeah, good, though. Like, yeah, not, but like, be like yeah. but not like that, you know, so I got to get a little, my, a little edge. So I'd be there at the end of camp and like come in and watch like, 20 minutes of film not crazy but just come in at the end and that room was always open i'd never had to kick anybody off the chair and i can remember the third day in it's the sun's going down or whatever it is and and, and everybody's out of the building and i walk in there and aaron donald's sitting there watching film and he's not doing his show off there's no coaches in the building mm -hmm. he's doing that because he's like serious about his craft and i'm telling you this dude like watches film like nobody i played with and he's more talented than everybody i play with so that's what makes and he's him on great. the line and he's on the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, yeah. If he's understanding formations and so shit like that. So it separates him from even his competition. Yeah. And that's why that guy is so great is because he's perfect here and he's perfect, you know, as a... Yeah, as we, a all see him. we all see his physique. So yeah, that's the thing people don't know. He's like... Is he the greatest of all time? Is he the GOAT defensive? Yeah. The best defensive lineman of all time? No, defensive player? Best, best three technique of all time. Right now? I mean, you know the thing... Well, what do you mean? Know, like, people are going to say, well, what happens if, like... Unless a suitcase falls out of a 747 and crushes Aaron Donald tomorrow, he's the best three technique I've ever seen play the You're game. You're saying we're he retired after this year? With all due respect. No, because I'd have to look at the numbers, but no. I mean, like, he's got 100 sacks already. That puts him in the Hall of Fame, right? He has mm -hmm. 100 sacks? Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer, no um, question. He's a Hall of Famer already. Um, his competition, I don't want to leave anybody out, like great players, like Warren Sapp, like one of the best players of all time, like, mm -hmm. period. So I'm not even saying it's a weak, position john randall some of the best players of all time i just i'm biased because i saw it up close yeah and i feel like as a rusher the only guy he's got 98 sacks right now look at him trying to fit in that tuxedo look oh. how thick his neck he's is. got the neck Big on him tie guy. yeah he had to measure his neck twice they were like uh 26 inches is that can that are we doing like uh <laughs> like the english metric system here <laughs> Look at that fucking guy's yeah. look at his abs, bro. But he works his fucking ass off, dude. He's also like 265 in that photo. I don't think he's 265, dude. He walks around at 285, dude. I don't believe that. I promise you. Look at pictures of him from Pitt. That's 285. I know, but that, no, no, no. Muscle weighs more than fat. I understand. I'm not calling him fat at Pitt, but because I would not do that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't always do that. Find me on the like, bus. He was, he's like, he's one of my buddies, but I don't want him to like yeah. roll up on me. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. I, I think no. I'm with you on Aaron Donald. He's one of the he's sorry, Aaron. One of the <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the greatest of all time. The pull up a picture of him at a uh, at Pitt. That is a, it's a completely different body style than it is now. But completely different. Like think about it. A lot of kids don't even have like you know the, you know have money to invest in their nutrition. I'm not saying mm -hmm. he didn't, but I'm just saying like this dude's eating cheeseburgers at Pitt. Yeah. Like this guy, if you give him. A million dollars, you know, like a check. I bet you he reinvests half of it in his, in his work ethic and in his body and in his his brand, which is his career. So, like, I bet you he's doing everything humanly possible to be out there and be at his best. He's a stud, dude. Yeah. You think uh, so? Your opinion would change if he would have retired after winning the Super Bowl. If he would have retired, I still believe. Like, okay, I do think there's some room for interpretation on that thing because, mm -hmm. like, the greatest, the best of all time to do whatever it is. 
like you've got guys in the in the Hall of Fame who who didn't do it for twelve years. Like mm -hmm. Terrell Davis is a perfect example. Cowboy Reed, do you hear? Yeah, yeah. Cowboy Reed's out there, Broncos fan. But like, there are guys that you know they're better than guys that played ten years and maybe had more yards than them or whatever. Yeah, you saw it. Like, what does the the film tell you? It's like, like Patrick Willis. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Willis. Stud. Calvin Johnson. Barry, Barry Sanders, yeah, dude. Yeah, Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Calvin Johnson, like, are you going to tell me because somebody plays, like, 10 years longer that, like, you're going to hold, like, certain stats against Calvin Johnson that were, like, just, you know, accruing sacks or yards or, to me, yeah, and I know you want the sound bite, but I'll give it to you. Aaron Donald's the best of all time at his position, in my opinion. <laughs> Like clip he, that, clip that. Yeah, clip, clip it, clip it. Clip it. <laughs> you guys are pros. I think you're trying to you're you're trying to ask too. Like, does he get labeled? Like, is his title universally known? Is his title to go? Time? Like, he, when you I, see, I, I when I say who's, who's the greatest football player of all time, who's the greatest football player of all time? The Older first people will always say Lawrence Taylor. No, no, no. I'm saying in general. Oh, I'm giving general, you a defense. Which we're gonna yeah, say. I mean, we're all gonna say Tom Brady. White too, bro. Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. Tom Brady. One hundred percent. The greatest. He's the great. And that's. So when I say who's the greatest defensive player of all time. If the first person that comes to your mind isn't Aaron Donald, then it's probably Reggie White or, yeah. or Lawrence Taylor. I Those mean, like when huge. you ask older coaches, like yeah. I think Lawrence Taylor's the best of all time because the guy I heard the guy had a fire ladder um at the hotel. Like, and you know what that's for? To get out of the building, right? When the building's on fire. But it also helps when you want to sneak out to party yeah. the night before the game. Oh, so which the guy, he's like think of very all well we Yeah. That he think, did. Of, think of all we have to do to get ready and like hydrate and like when we get to an away game, I bet yeah. you you go to your room, you drink as many waters. Well, the, fir as the first place I go to is the IV. Oh, I need an IV. Yeah, I need I've any, any, my NAD, I need my ozone, I need my vitamin bag. Yeah, Lawrence Taylor had oh. an IV of good time, dude. Yeah, and Lawrence Taylor would come to the building and just fucking. This is all hearsay, so I don't want to disrespect yeah. the man, but I think it's well known. He came to the building, he'd take a nap, they'd wake him up, and he'd go, like, have five sacks. Right. Bro, like, my best game of my career, like, everything goes into that. Right. That's why, to me, Lawrence Taylor uh, is maybe the best defensive player of all time. Like, I, it's hard to compare. It's like two different jobs. Two different, jo two different generations, too. I think it's much harder in football to compare, like, positions and say that guy's the best. Like, like basketball, there's a little less var variability in what that player does on the mm -hmm. court. You know, so I, I think it's hard to do the greatest of all time in football. Yeah. You are great at conversations. You, you're having fun? <laughs> Don't you think he is? No, he's, he's just well-spoken. He's yeah, you're, you're a well-spoken guy, and he you have analogies to go on analogies. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's, um, fuck, he's right. After yeah. this, after this, you're jumping on a plane. <laughs> I am. But you I don't want to stop when you have to leave. No, 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 that's fine. Okay, let me, I, take, let me, take me and time. this guy have a lot of catching up yeah, to do. I gotta leave in... Okay. Minutes? Yeah, okay. we're good. Okay, we're good. Minutes? Yeah, we have lots of Gosh, lots I just of want to stay on the bus. That's okay. I'm supposed to go to Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we up by 1230. Yeah, something like that. Dude, I told you I was gonna get here. And this man this morning is like, when I landed, he's like, uh, I'm not mad, but you, your team said you'd be here at 8:45. I'm yeah. like, I'm just well, with he you. Knows, well, he we knows that I have. I was like, when Will called me, he's like, Hey, Chris is gonna be here. I'm like, Bro, I gotta work out. I can't make it. And he's like, Hey, I was trying to. He's push literally coming you to do it in earlier. just to do our pod, then he's leaving. I'm to motivate you to work here. Look, here I am. Yeah, and you here look I awesome, am. dude. Right? Thanks, dude. You're gonna there's have a, a lot great of, there's year. A lot of, you're right, though. There's a lot of juggling no, going on. There's a lot of juggling on for Will. I know, I know, I know. But I was gonna try to turn. I was gonna try to turn around on you, but I know. But this isn't as much of a ball busting session as I thought it would be. I got you back. I got you back. I got you back. I got you back. Um, what was that? He I, said, "Team, team, team." Like, make sure we're we we. I, 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 I had. I gotta have Will's back. Like, uh, oh, is that like a code you have here? No, 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 no. There's no code. But it, <laughs> yeah, the, there's really not a code. Yeah. What you got in there? Was that actual Altoids? More stuff. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Um, <laughs> when you're going, when you're going to the draft right now, what are you doing at the draft? Uh, I am doing a Coors Light um, draft segment. So, like, well, we've been doing the Coors Light draft segment. We're doing a live watch, like. Um, First round and the, I can't think while I'm doing this. Okay. But yeah, no, like, so we're going to do live watches with a couple guys. Like, who do we have on, who's coming by? Will Blackman, you know, mm. he does like wine, oh, stuff, wine MVP. That's my Willie dude. Beeman. He's also got a great Twitter account. Yeah, There's yeah. A few no, that Will I'm does. like, when I sign on, I'm like, ha, huh, I want to see more guys like Will Blackman on yeah. Twitter. His, he's sneaky. He was later in the game. So he's, he's climbing. It's growing. Yes, he's very clever. He's very clean. Right. He's kind of a wise ass. He really right. get on your ass on the timeline, dude. It's, it's funny too because you're like looking. Like I agree with you. Like Will is a great like Twitter follow. Yeah. And like man, like you don't. You're not able to like get all that growth that he Will should have. Yes, like, to me, yes, Will yes. should have so many fucking followers. Don't you hate that when you're like, this is a banger. 
And it's like 25 likes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a banger. Yeah. 25 no, likes. So, um, Will's coming by. Who else is coming by there? Eric Armstead. Eric Armstead. You like Eric Armstead? Yeah. Good player. Eric, wait, Eric Armstead, uh, Saints tackle? Austin no. Eckler. Austin Eckler. Bullet. No, what? No, that's, He's that's, Austin that's Eckler. Ron Armstead. So, Ron Armstead. bulletin board material. Do you play the Niners this year? That's going to be tough because we're going to post that. We'll we'll pull this. Oh <laughs> uh, no 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 no! This league. <laughs> Eric Armstead? No, we don't. We don't. We don't play. Technique from San Francisco, the tall guy that yeah. somehow is still awesome. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, job. I know who that is. I think he played at Oregon, right? Yeah, Oregon guy. Okay okay yeah. So when him and Buckner, nice, cool. him and Buckner were the two guys. You're my dog, dude. Him and Buckner were the two guys. Buckner's a stud place for the Colts now. Yeah. And they had to choose between <laughs> the two of them. And they traded for a nice trade to the Colts. Just fucking started yeah. saying shit. Yeah. Um, so wait, what's what's Bolton board? Three-way trade just, between. Just, just, just yeah. so Taylor can uh, respond to your tweets. Said, Eric Armstead and the Buckner. Clip. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What about it, Vegas? We we're gonna have a great time. But it's been a hilarious. I heard you talking about your fucking little schedule. Our schedule has been crazy, dude. Schedule with my last couple of days. Like I was in Charleston for a guy's trip. We got down there, the boys. Like I'm in a different stage of fatherhood. I can take these trips. Um, had a great time, and then went straight to my golf tournament. Uh, that was nonstop. Hopped on a bird to see you guys, and now we're gonna go to Vegas for three days. And I think after that, I'm asleep for a week. So are you pretty well out right now? I'm tired, dude. Yeah. Hey, it's pretty cool to call airplanes birds too. Well, yeah, it's not cool like pool. we do them enough, but like it, you can't <laughs> say on a bird to come see you guys. Private jet. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If you say private jet, also, what's your fucking, what's your um kind of like policy on posting pictures of your private airplane? Ooh, I think that's very super, hairy. It's a very hairy know, situation. If you're a you rapper, it, you can do it. If you're yeah, a pro, right, I can afford one. When you do it, oh yeah, hey, we, we ain't worried about you. Well, for one down there, yeah, you're, 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 you're for sure. You're, <laughs> I think it depends. I think it depends. <laughs> Private Willie, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Private Willie. That's uh, Dude, it. Really depends on uh, first off who you are and what your quote unquote brand is. So like if Will were to go and do that, it's right on brand because like brand po he posts everything. He's monetizing his child. Yes, like he's literally. So he'll, that he'll is post that's a anything. funny thing. I'm that's not funny the only thing. person busting his balls right. about that. Right. No, 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 no. Earlier, because yeah, like you, it is all fatherhood's all. You got you like hey that's and hilarious. He he's excited. doing that. You should be. Oh, uh, dude, I am excited. And you're like, fucking funny as shit on Twitter. So you know, I don't think I was looking too much into it. If anything, I'm thinking about the up when I said up and down. It's like oh, I might sound like I just hate fatherhood right now. No, you you being a dad. Yeah, tough night last night. It's all right. Yeah, she didn't go down very well last night. But uh, the whole she didn't being down. on a plane thing, when you do it... Pass the baton, dude. I don't know how you feel about this, Chris, but when you get on a private plane, like, you think Chris it's the coolest thing ever. No, you, I just think it's great not to have to, like, go... Like, yeah, but you, It's not like a... It's not like a, oh, I feel like, like, you know, um, like, Alex Rodriguez or something. No, I'm saying... I do, bro. I, I'm saying, just relax, Will. <laughs> I'm saying when I whenever I get on it, whenever I get on a bird, yeah. and I walk up to it, I always am like super grateful, like have like low key like a reflection of like, damn, it's cool that I get to do this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I feel a little fucking. And you kind of you but... want to share that. You want to be like, look at this, but I have a hard time ever posting myself on a on a jet. Yeah, now no. where our brand is and what we do, how we're constantly tweeting about everything going on in our lives, it makes it easier to justify that. Yeah, but, but no, you it, know it, how it is. Most of the time, a lot of times we're just in our own head about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but also, I see, I see other players. Bro. I, I see other players do it. When I see other players do it, I'm like, eh, come on, bud. That's you. Yeah, but it's like that's if that's all they post. It? No, I don't post it. I don't post. Like I, don't, I, like, I don't post yeah, it. like we'll do it sometimes. I will if it, if I was with Will, I would do it. Is that's weird, right? No, because because you have never done it on yours, huh? That's the only reason I've never done it with yours. Yeah, oh, that is right. You never. I've never done it. Like you feel like so I feel like you've been. Here's the hey, scary man. thing: you both. I don't like. Yeah, I don't like yeah, people no, knowing you that. Both though. are taking that picture, thinking, "Oh, like he knows it's not corny," and like yeah. it's like a leap of faith, but maybe it is corny. Yeah, I. Uh, and the strength of numbers thing. It doesn't <laughs> shit, really. That's what it is. Like, numbers is the real the thing. Timeline, if it's corny. right, right, right. I think right. it's kind of. I think it's kind of like it's kind of like hard o to like post a private jet picture, yeah. but I also get that like, fuck, dude, it's cool. You, you work cool. your ass off and you're telling an airplane where to go. It's like GTA. Right. You're not going to do anything bad with it. You could. Well, I mean, leave that for this interpretation. Come out until after the, the ride. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, so my pilots aren't going to hear this. The, uh, my pilots. Um, for the day they are. It's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for what I paid, yeah, there are my yeah, yeah, pilots. Yeah, especially gas prices right now. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. You must be hurting right now a little bit, taking that thing well, to Vegas. Well. We know you ain't hurting, boss. I ain't worried about it. Well, the podcast pays well. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're probably taking care of it. No. 
Partially. I was gonna say, yeah, come on, though. It's business. How is your relationship with them with Blue Wire? Who is your like, relationship like with? Blue, is it Blue Wire or Win Better? Blue what Wire, the Win. I mean, like the reason we we went with Blue Wire and talking to Kevin Jones and those guys is like, we don't, as you could imagine, knowing me a little bit, like I don't want to be metal with, dude. I don't want to have to deal with shit. And you guys have some good breathing room too. I hear, mm. even being on Barstool, like. Will is a fucking wizard, though, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm like you, where I'm like, can I just come and do the podcast and enjoy myself? Believe it or not, that's not me. Really? I, what I'm saying is I don't like to be told what to do. You know okay, what I mean? Well, the guys the in the back, my producers feel. are like, that is not how he is. Yeah. Like, because I produce the pod, dude. Like, yeah. these guys produce the pod with me. Reed, me, Matt, we're a team. So, like, you know, I'm a little particular, and uh, and I don't I don't ever want to get a call and be like the pod's too long. Like or, you want to micromanage you, or you want to you want to micromanage yourself. You don't want. Oh, I'm paying the bills. Yeah. I'm running a business. You know, it's like that's been the craziest thing about this podcast is like you learn you're learning a new skill, but I'm also learning to actually be an adult. Mm. Like as I do. no doubt, like, like, like you said before, yeah. hey, being a kid for thirty years, like you said, yeah, like we've been able to be children for thirty years of our yes, lives, dude. And and my guys that work with me probably know that, and mm. I'm not always great at what I do, like. You know, on the on the microphone, hopefully our, our audience likes it. But, like, I also think sometimes, like, it's hard to come to work with one of us. Mm. You know, like, we're scattered. We're, like, all over the place. So these guys work super hard. But the win, Blue Wire, they've been great. Um, I love the win because I used to stay at the win. Like, real talk. Like, I'd go there on our trips yeah. as a player and just get blasted at the win. Enjoy their brec breakfast sausages and their fucking, their, their hash browns that are shaped like triangles. And they're beautiful Fire. pool. That's the, that's the best shape for a hash brown, too. Isn't it? <laughs> that or the McDonald's also, fucking so oval. McDonald's that oval, oval is bro. That fucking thing is hitter, nice. dude. And the way it slides out of that package. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what am hey, I doing? That thing flies smooth, too. And it's a little crispy. I think you hear the movement yeah, downstairs. You hear it if you like, it yeah. I love how he's talking about his business, and we heard hash browns. We're like, how about the mobiles, though? No, I don't want to make this about me. I want to talk about hash browns. podcast is literally you. I know. It's a weird thing. But you know how that is when you go on a guest to somebody, and you're like cognizant of not making your podcast all about you. Yeah. I don't know. Do you do no. that? Not at all. Yeah, like, no, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> what do you do? You mean? He sits there, he sucks vicious sins, and I see him cracking a smile, and I'm like, no, it's funny. Oh, he's starting to think about Bro, me. Like, this is so cool because I'm such a fan of Will Compton. Obviously, you know, being Taylor Lewan fan, too, playing against Taylor. You lying. Huh? <laughs> so are you lying? No, you're, you're a, Compton you're fan. a tattooed dude. Who's doing great in the league? Like, I, we gotta that. stick together, dude. I'm with that. You're both tatted white dudes in the league. White, white, white guys in the tatted league. White dudes. Who are outspoken. Strong <laughs> chins. Strong jaws. Yeah, yeah. Strong jaws. Handsome yeah. boys. I but get honestly, it. This is I'm cool with Because I've been, it's so funny. I've been laughing at this motherfucker and we've played each other, but I've never met you. I know. That but was I felt weird. Like I, we were like, boys. No, we hugged. Like, we, we was like, on the oh, phone, bro. bro. Like, I don't talk on the fucking phone. I talk to the phone. I talk on the phone with Will Compton, bro. But, um, you know, the win is super cool. Um, and, you know, they give us freedom. And I don't always like to talk about the same thing as y'all probably mm. do. Like, some days I come in and I feel like talking about something different. And it's nice. I'm just also self-selective to run your podcast like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to try, try to chase the crowd, as y'all don't. Mm. You've done something unique. You'll never have to compare yourself to anything else. Because if you start doing that, then you try to beat other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you start like, what are they doing over there? You can you can copy certain things like how they put out socials, right? How long their pods are, that sort of thing. But yeah. I think if you start being like, people like that person, and that's how they're acting, like, you can't do that because you're gonna be not yourself. So I think like it's really cool to be on our own. You know, it sounds like you guys have latitude too. It's tougher because people don't like Blue Wires. You know, not as recognizable sometimes as some of the other brands, but it's growing. Um. And we really have to earn our keep, and that's cool. I'm fine with that, because the people that are listening really fuck with us. The people that don't listen, like, I don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. The last thing I ever want is somebody having to click on our content and being like, this guy sucks, and he's on my landing page. Like, you know, my, my you know, the ringer or Barstool is sharing this guy, and he sucks. Well, if you're listening to us, like, that's your fucking problem. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's the nice thing about kind of being on our own a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I do like um it is cool being like part of Barstool for yeah. the reasons you're saying like it's tough being on Blue Wire. It's like when people are like, Oh, you're with you're with Barstool, right? Like kind of comes off a, a different way There's for a sure. lot of associations. Mm -hmm. And it gives you, you guys they, they have so many people, podcasts you know, and so like, many different ways to cross pollinate and stuff like that. It's just it's super it's super beneficial. That is cool. That's really yeah. cool. You know, we've been able to cross pollinate a little bit with people from Blue Wire. A funny word too, cross pollinate. But it's a fucking great word and we're using yeah, it. Yeah, we're using it. I love it. 
Uh, yeah, you gotta yell at me. I heard cross fertilize. <laughs> I heard cross fertilize this weekend. Really? Yeah, dude. That's I'm, a weird I'm deal. Fuck uh, those guys, right? The bees, dude. Yeah, uh, the bees is where it's at for yeah. sure. I like cross fertilize. That's a good. You like cross point. fertilize? I like that. Over a cross fertilize. Well, you're, you're a you're a so. you're a Midwestern guy. So you would yeah, like cross fertilize? That's so weird to me no, that Missouri's in the Midwest. A lot of fertilizer in the there's Midwest. A lot of fertilizer. Oh, see, y'all are so y'all Midwesterners are ready to be like, did you call me a Hoosier? Why do y'all say that Hoosier? What do you mean? Hoosier I don't really is like, say that. Like, I don't really redneck. Like it. It's like a redneck. It's the word for redneck. Isn't in, that what in Indiana's Missouri. slogan is? Oh, like right. For the yeah, Hoosiers. Yeah, yeah. I just thought, I, I'm just saying I don't feel like people go around just calling people Hoosiers. Oh, really? That's not a thing? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But I do feel like Hoosiers understood that you're like a, like a redneck. Y'all have a different dialect out there. We do. Yeah. You've been out in Missouri, man. Cross fertilize. Salt of the earth. I love Missouri, dude. God, but it, you don't I love, don't love it in fucking July. But you don't love Emo's Pizza. I do not like Emo's Pizza. Have you had Never this? heard of Emo's he Pizza. He hasn't had it. He actually, he's told me about it, but I don't. They actually, it's a long process. They fer It's like a really long process. They just put a piece of cheese that you've never heard of on, on Highway 40, and then they just let the Missouri sun bake it on a piece of bread for like three weeks, I think. So it's mm. a really long process to get that. I don't know if this is true. Thing. Is this a real thing? No, I'm just shitting on okay, the pizza. Yeah. I was like, what, three I weeks? Think the pizza rips, bro. You think the pizza rips? And that's the biggest, like... Your, your taste buds are all about how you grew up. It, yeah, it really I agree is. with that. I all agree with that. Hey, people think I'm weird as fuck for doing peanut butter sandwiches and chili. I was just going to bring that up. I was just going to bring that up. peanut butter sandwiches and chili. I thought that you were doing a, 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 a bit, like, you know how people do fucked up food? Yeah, Bloss. Yeah. go viral. <laughs> he, like, did, like, a deviled That's egg good. the other day. Oh, yeah. Peanut butter and jelly in it. Bro. Oh, I'll try anything, but probably not the, um, that thing. Dude, I, that's, and that blows my mind. I used it's to really hit, not bad. I Will, Will made it for me one time. It was really good. I enjoyed it. Right? I thank thought it was good. God. Thought, hey, same team, same team. Were you medicating your ADHD at the time? No, I haven't medicated it. Come on. Bro, we can be better listeners. Good, bro. No, I know that. I'm, I'm busting your ball. Yeah. Dip some peanut butter sandwiches in it. And if you like, mix a little bit of honey with that peanut butter. I was talking about uh, marijuana. What about marijuana? I, you had the munchies. I was oh, saying, why would you eat it? You no, I don't smoke weed, dude. I, I care about my career. I know that, too. It's a joke. Dude, so when when we were in COVID... I was when we had the new nanogram testing, it went from like 20 up to 50. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Or, wait, uh, weed? Yeah. I think it's like 150. Or 150. Because it used to be like, hey, you got a little speck in there, right. your ass is gone. Oh, sorry, Will. That was rude. And I'd be, and I'm okay. So <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not, now I'm starting to get in my okay. bag. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but so we were in COVID, so we're at home. Every day, all day long, up late at night playing Risk. So the boy, we would laugh about it on text sometimes. Like, I'd take an edible, and then I'm mm -hmm. sending a photo to you when I'm in the bed yes. at night. Yeah. So I'm taking a few edibles. Is this funny? Should I say yeah. this? Yeah. <laughs> I might so, hire a guy to be with me when I'm on right. edible. Go ahead. And so uh, whenever the, the new CBA or the nanogram levels went up, I remember ordering on Amazon just all a lot of drug tests so I could figure out how many... How many days in a row I could go no. without it being in my system? No. And then how long it took it for to exit my system? So that way I knew, Man. like when I'm like earlier, I'm like, oh, I'd pass the test because in my head, like I did the science during yeah. COVID. You did. When we were when we were trapped. My man was, bro. hey, he was playing chess. Sounds like yeah, LeBron talking, talking about his game-winning shot. I've already taken this shot. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I've done this oh, in my head a hundred times, dude. Charles, so like, so we funny. get another box. I'm like, oh, those are just my drug tests. He's like, are you still doing that experiment? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Hey, dude, hey, just knocked out of the park, hey, Will, though. Will, get a fake yeah. dick. Just get a fake dick, dude. A fake dick? That'd be yeah, so just, scary to do. Just oh, Wizenator. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Dude, to execute that. Nowhere, hey, Will, just like, you have something in your pocket on the way into the... <laughs> Bro, and, and you gotta, like, flop it out. And, hey, oh, dude, you gotta press they, on it. They get I'm you... Thinking. They get, yeah, I don't know. You would imagine. <laughs> Does that, is I don't that know. what happens? I know. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, one thing, dude, we were playing the Ravens my rookie year. Yeah. And I go to the bathroom. I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm about to wipe. I pull the fucking tissue out. And there's like a jingling. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I keep pulling the tissue. A syringe fell out. Like of a steroids? Like a, a, just a, a, a syringe just came out of the toilet, like the toilet paper dispenser and fell on the floor. Do you think a lot of people are shoving that shit in their butt? I don't know, dude. But I saw, I don't think a lot of people. I, I was I like, hey, in, so in my mind, I'm like, couple. in my mind, I was I'm like, there's so no naive, way dude. that somebody on, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> Will, that <laughs> dumb shit. Do? I'm just messing around. Right. And though I'm joking uh, around. I guess I had a PED. What, in my mind, like, you go, I, yeah. go, I know I a couple about guys. But you know what, that's the thing, I forgot about it. Like people right? take the wrong shit sometimes. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. take the wrong shit It's crazy how you think it's like the biggest thing in the world and then it kind of just goes away. 
That's like almost anything. Every, yeah, it's pretty much everything. Sort of like, yeah, killing somebody, like mostly. But like Ray Lewis. So what are you talking about? Uh, I'm not laughing. OJ. Murder. An hour 14. Stab. No, we talk about OJ. Do you I was at a NASCAR OJ? race recently. You follow Ray Lewis? See this? Yeah, see I this? see it. That, that Who's 19? Uh, uh, Martin Truex Jr. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That guy. guy. All right, so cool. I had to pick a favorite NASCAR driver, and, uh, and, and I picked him. And then it's really cool at NASCAR, as you guys probably know. Like, they just hang out before the races. Like, they're getting ready to basically play, you know, the Buccaneers or something. You got to block JPP, but 30 minutes before, you're sitting in, like, a garage talking to sponsors. That's, That's like, how they crazy. kick it in their full NASCAR uniforms. I looked up. I saw Martin Truex Jr. He was like, Jesus. He was just, like, he had an aura. But I got to drive the pit car. How or, dope no, was that? Not the pit car, the, the pace car? car. Pace car? Pace car. That's the... Uh, um, and I felt like Al Collings, the guy that was driving OJ around, because they're all right behind you, dude. Mm. It's like a hundred cop cars. Um, and I probably I was changing the subject from Ray Lewis. Yeah. I'm probably he, yeah. <laughs> he might have been there. You know what I mean? You don't think he did it? I have no idea, dude. But have you met Ray Lewis? Yeah, but you when tell you me, do him, you think he did it? When I talked to him, I don't think so. Like I've never spoke to him. I, I don't know so that. For me, it's okay to drag his I don't name. know that dude, and I didn't, and I did, and I wasn't there, so I was gonna ask, like, did he? I don't think he did. Okay. I, okay. Is he a little too much of a me guy, though? You think? Like, Survivor like, speech, and he like looked at me one time, called me five one, and it'll forever be. He said five one. Oh, for real? Oh yeah. I, they couldn't see what I was seeing. Five one. I was like. Yes. <laughs> no, they fucking couldn't, right? But that's the thing. Like, no, they couldn't. All Hall of I used to listen to Ray every day in college. Dude, Hall for real. Are like, linebackers. Yeah. Awesome. They're great. They're great orators, bro. Whatever the fuck that word is. They they tell, like, ama they say things, and people are just like, yeah. Yeah. Like, when you're in the Hall of Fame, people just say, yeah. You like, can say whatever you want, huh? Whatever you want, bro. That's what I do with my dad. But he actually says some cool, really cool shit. Yeah. But, you know, like, if he ever does it, I'm like, yeah. But there are some guys who are, like, super into themselves about, like, all right, these people are going to want me to tell a story. Let me get a story. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is, like, you, when, you, when you're, like, that guy, like, you've been, he's been the pumping up NFL teams for everything's motivational. Like, he's, you know, that kind of... Oh, Ray or your dad? Ray. No, not my dad. Yeah, my dad so does, your dad gives off them. totally different vibes. In his Skechers commercials, I feel like I can walk up to him and fucking shake his hand and give him a hug right my away. That is a great person, dude. He seems like a fantastic yeah, he's guy. He's down to earth. Played golf at my golf tournament yesterday. Like, our title sponsor, like, he just brought him back to the house to kick it. Like, uh -huh. he's just a good person, dude. You know, like, um, yeah, I can't say enough about the dude. He's not like a lot of people I've met that played in the NFL that long. Yeah, especially with the Raiders, too. He seems like he wasn't like that. Sometimes I imagine how, like, I know everybody was young, but it's like... Uh, some people are too good to be true. I'm like, this motherfucker's too good to be true. You think he's got some skeletons? No, Do you but think he was with Ray Lewis. No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get into an altercation. My dad was a a really good boxer in college. Uh, really? Yeah, he he's got hands, dude. So like, damn, and they're very heavy. You know who's got the heaviest hands of all time? My uh, brother, Kyle. Yeah, he's got some fucking. He just seems like a dude with heavy he's ass like a hands. Polar bear, dude. I tell you what, I don't know. Incognito. He's got fucking heavy hands. Richie's got some hands. Uh, Roger alley, Saffold. I'm, I'm, I got it at like minus 200 Kyle Long. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, yeah, first off. Him. I think Richie might tell you he, he's not real excited about tussling with Kyle. And they're boys. How big is Kyle? I remember seeing him at the KC game. The dude's fucking massive. Bro, bro, he walks around he's at a big dude. dude. A big, a big dude. fucking dude. He's like a, he has a butt. He has, like, calves. Like, I sound like Mike Mayock right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're scouting? Yeah, You're I'm scouting scout, him out. I'm, like, always scouting my Let's brother. Yeah. Index. Bring I'm him like, out look here. at him. Look at him. And they're like, yeah, Chris, he's coming off of three. <laughs> <in my arms." laughs> like, I'm like, but, 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 you know, like, six, six, then 313, that's bullshit. Oh, he's way more than that? 313, he... <laughs> He's a thick boy. Yeah, he's thick. Yeah, thick he's got dude. that good power metal piece. Yeah, yeah, he's built from the bottom, dude. He's supposed to come on the bus. He's got to come on the bus. Oh, he'd be he, great dude, on the he's bus. He's funny too. He's got a, he's got a good little following on Twitter he's, too. He's fun. He's gonna be actually doing it with us now. So look at this. Look at this handsome boy right there. And the oh, he's the joined the squad. Like he's, he's green light. Look at that that no beard looking ass boy. Uh, Dog. I, I think hate. he looks solid there. Yeah. That's a good look. That's a good That's look. a good tough guy look. Bro, tough guy look. I, you know, I'm looking tough because they're fucking playing me in the fourth, in this, in week 17 with home field locked up. I'm out there with the threes. Really? That's why I look tough. <laughs> That's a tough fucking deal. I'm 30, I'm 33 years old. I got two shots of Tordal in me. You want me to look happy out there? <laughs> that Tordal oh, makes, makes you bro, feel nice. Bro, real talk, bro. week 17, uh, our Super Bowl year. 
Bro, it's zero degrees at the link. We're playing the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. They're playing Zeke. They're playing Witten. They're playing all their guys. Playing the studs. Yeah, and I had to take some snaps. Really? Yeah, dude. How many snaps? Like five to ten? No, many. Oh, really? You played? Half, half. Oh. Yeah, dude. So that You were bitter, probably... weren't you? I was cold. Yeah. No. I'll put it that way. I've never... It's amazing. Isn't that just a, a crazy feeling that when you go and play an NFL game, if there's no thought of you not having to play the whole game, like, there's never that thought. And so when you go play, it's like, okay, ball's out. You're not thinking, like, how many snaps I'm going to have to get. But boy, do you but think about it in preseason. Oh, my God. And preseason, that's the only thing you think about. Like, you go in, like, you're three, four days before the game, and you're like, man, how much am I going to fucking play? I'm putting, yeah. like, I'm putting, like, I'm, I'm like, chipping my coach's cell phones to yeah. find out, like, Dude. what's the plan? And then they, you go to the assistant coach, and you're like, hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm like, not going to really? say nothing. Just hey, let me know. Trainers. What's yeah. the pulse? Hey, what's man, the pulse? What are they saying upstairs? Uh, and they guard it, like, fucking, like, like uh, you know, intelligent. Which is so weird. Because it's like, eventually, like someone like you who's got a level of maturity, yeah, I would be able to think, okay, I can tell Chris, hey, Chris you're only playing play a series. You're only going to play a series. Yeah. And I can tell you that two weeks from now, you're not going to like three days before when I practice, like fuck around because yeah. you're not playing. Like, you're going to take it serious. Chris is afraid that the undrafted guy is going to take his job. Right. So okay. we no, can tell no Chris, shade. you're I'm just playing. Saying. Young, talented Whoa, dude. You were throwing shade? No, I wasn't. But the way you leaned in and smiled at me, you're just always smiling. Oh, no, yeah. I'm so just I'm like, even thinking you're about the that. opposite of my co host. It's crazy watching two high paranoid guys do a podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Macon, my co host, he's not good at smiling at, or laughing at your jokes. You like constantly give the energy. And I'm like, what's the catch? You no, know? There was no catch, man. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm constantly thinking about the undrafted guys taking my spot. No, but you are, and I'm dude. thinking in my head, were you really thinking that? Like, Fuck are you yeah, really I'm thinking, thinking that? that, dude? Fuck yeah, I'm thinking that. That's the only way. I, like, you know, not, I'm not, like, late in my career. I, I was pretty good in my prime, but late in my career, I know what my, I know the deal. Like, you know, like, you really have to earn your keep. So, yeah, when you're out there in preseason, bro, like, you can't take it, you can't half step. They're, they're trying to get you out the door anyways. You're not as cheap as the young guys. That's true. So, yeah, dude, you'd be a like, tough vet to beat out too. Like if you're an undrafted cat, you're thinking like you want the like a cockroach. You want the starter. You want the guys to be a little have a little arrogance, a little cockiness. Coaches coaching them up a little bit. They're not actually retaining it. Like yeah. you're sitting there being like, I you kind of hope they don't remember. That's why I deleted so myself. Them, like kind of get them. Yeah, that's why I deleted myself to get out before somebody could delete me. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, that's the dream, dude. Just delete yourself, dude. Before it's all, it's before it's when too you late. Start, like having to deal with the bullshit, and you're like. You'll get there one day. Hopefully, it's five, seven years. I don't we'll know see. how long you want to play. We'll see. How long I'll you find out play? on Thursday. How long you want to play? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. The, where, where the Titans are at right now and the trajectory of what could be, like, I'm, like, in it. I really, like, want to fucking play. And I want to win a, a Super Bowl real bad. Fun. I talked to Tannehill really on about. FaceTime last week, by the way. Really? What was he, what was he doing? Finnegan. Oh, really? Not Portland and all? Uh, I've never met him. But I feel like that dude's always been like, uh, uh, hey, Finnegan was here 15 minutes ago type of deal. I would like go to like 505, which is an apartment complex. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh yeah, Finnegan just left. I would go to Martin's Barbecue. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, Finnegan just left. Like it's just crazy shit like that. Portland Finnegan is. White skin dude got his ass beat by. Um, I know, I remember. Yeah. But, you Andre know. Johnson. Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson. To his credit, that's not the worst guy to get your ass kicked. Right. No, dude, he's a fucking beast. It ain't like, it ain't like you got his ass little too. Yeah, it ain't like he, Tim Dwight kicked his ass here. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So fucking he, but anyway, you no said you were saying he's a good dude. He might have hands. You were saying uh, Finnegan's a good dude. Tannehill. Oh, Cortland's the best, dude. Yeah, Cortland's the best, dude. I played with him in St. Louis. People, some people hate Court because they played against him because he's a shit talker. Mm -hmm. By the way, you never cop to me actually talking shit. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll make it sh short and sweet. We were playing. It was the third game of the year. I believe you were on the team because it was eighteen. And yeah, I think that was, that it was, was either game, right? yeah, it, it was either Conklin. It was his first game back. And he had a real tough year coming back from his ACL, or it was a backup. He's good. I like Conklin. Yeah, he's good. He need, but that was like a real tough year for him. Get him turned. What's that? Gotta get him turned. Gotta get him turned. Yeah. He but he's he's got that heat seeking missile of an outside yeah, hand that kind of gets right in your chest. Really unorthodox. It's very. He's a he's a very unorthodox. You watch him play, and you're like, what's going on here? Yeah. And by you the way, we're not exactly teeing off on you guys because you guys can run the football and that, smacking it up. Thing. We're yeah. kind of getting that thing going, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. But um, I remember you beat them around the edge and like hit the quarterback one time, and like I'm blocking your boy Barnett, and you kind of whisper in my ear, you go, I'm on his ass all day. And he kind of fucking... <laughs> it wasn't that. like, it wasn't like you, and you, you? you just asked me to be part of Waterboys that off season. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we had like a, so we, we kind of knew each other. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. smack, it was more like... But it wasn't like we're fucking boys boys, like what, we're sitting on a podcast I talking. To, I probably wanted to see if you were like, like frustrated by yeah. him, because then if you're frustrated by the, him, then the next play, I'm like, Taylor seemed frustrated with you. 
Oh, I see. No, I don't. <laughs> Playing chess out there. Hey, for, hey. I love that. I don't play checkers with the shit talk. Like, I'm not that cool and good yeah, to be talking shit. I love shit, shit talking, dude. It's my too. favorite thing. But, you know, you got to play a little bit of chess, uh, you know? When I think, when I do conditioning in the offseason, like, when I go work out after we're done with this, like, and I'm dying conditioning, my thought is, hey, your reward is you'll be able to talk shit all game. No question. That's your reward no for question. doing the conditioning right now. It's not no for question. being in shape for football. Yeah. It's can I play football at a high level and be able to so tell you, you how bad you are. your mouth. Yeah, 100%. You, you do like, you're like a wrestler. Uh, in what way? Like you, 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 you'd be good at promos. Like you do talk good shit. I do like to talk shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm more like a bro talk. Like oh, I, want, hey, I, I, want, I want, you're your, a homie talker. Yeah. I want your game to come down a little bit. Like yeah. I want to tell her, it's like, oh bro, you're fucking That's crushing. exactly, I was about I'm to like, say I'm that like, bro. You're crushing it this year, bro. And so that way he, in his mind, it would be, oh, comp has so much respect for me. Maybe yes. I can take a little bit off yes. because he's, he doesn't feel like he's going to guard See, me. That doesn't phase I need me. your level to come down a little bit. I, I just, no, and yeah, it's also just like when, you, when you're nice to somebody, it sets the tone that it's not what it is. Yeah. And like. Because uh, Greg Olson, this is a great example. Yeah. Greg Olson, he shit talked me, called me like, what are you, a fucking third stringer? Because I Spider-Man webbed him after breaking him a pass. I like fucking went. And he's like, what are you like <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, he's like, dude. What are you like Give the me that fucking... one, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime a dude, like a coach, like somebody mess up in a meeting or say something funny or pause or something like that, or like, that's a dumb question, you'd like spray him across the room, like give a little, You're like stuck. on our team, it was like an inside yeah, joke. Yeah. So I like, did it to Olsen because I told the boys I would do it. They're like, hey, do it if you make a play. I'm like, all right. And so I did to Olsen. He's like, who the fuck are you? What are you, like third string? And I was like, hey, man, hey, I'll work for this spot. Kind of like smiling, <laughs> like just like that. And the next time out, he's like, hey, man, my bad, man. You know, I didn't, I know. Yeah, you exactly. Like, I know you from this spot. Like, I didn't mean that, bro. That's that's all me. Oh, he was, was nice like that? Yeah, Greg Olson. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's all good, bro. Dad, he's a homie. Home. Greg Olson is a great dude. Also, I believe one of the best of what he does already. Really? You haven't heard him call a game. Mm. You haven't either. I mean, but I, I listen, I watch. Greg Olson's fucking good, dude. Tony Romo? In my opinion, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like. Tony, so I feel like, we're, fun, we're complaining. I'm also a fucking. I'm also a lineman, so Tony's thing is not exactly going to be, like, circling a guard or, like, right. talking about a kick-out block. Like, I get so mad watching games because people just, their line play terminology is so bad. And then you Very see generic. it regurgitated by the fans, and it's, like, extra frustrating. I'm not saying Tony does this, but quarterbacks, wide receivers, they don't play, pay attention to us. Mm. Greg had to block six techniques. So Greg, like, knows the words. He knows everything. So I think he's very good, dude. Six take no joke at tight end. Dude, yeah. No fucking yeah. joke. And he, they started that media company. Him and Vince Vaughn. Oh, did he? Yeah. Nice. You didn't know that? No. I fucking love I Vince Vaughn. Called. Oh, I fucking love Vince Vaughn. Um, yeah, it might be one of yeah. the shows on the, in the... But I, I love Greg, dude. I used to party on... And I, Greg's brother played at Virginia. So um, we'd go down to Miami for spring break. And uh, hey, I got to pee on Greg Olson's house. Pee again? What? He's got to pee again. Bro, hey, what's with that? Yeah, problem? maybe he's not that hydrated, hydrated, huh? Man, the hydrated king was coming on. I had to get hydrated. Bro, you need more. You need more space, bro. I got a big. Hey, it's, you he, can tell he's recently hydrated. He needs an extended fuel tank, honestly. Yeah, he needs something, dude. When you first like, I remember in high school when you like start drinking water for real. Yeah. Like, oh, I gotta start getting hydrated. Yeah. You'd piss like eight, nine, ten times a day. Well, then you and start, then eventually, yeah. yes, you're actually hydrated. Yes, dude. Willie's not hydrated. No, Willie's not. No. I mean, honestly, the, the scariest thing in the world is when you binge drink mm. and you think, like, after 36 hours, not only have I just been drinking alcohol, but do I remember a water? Mm. Dude, and after, like, you low-key feel like you're cramping everywhere. Like, you can't make any sudden move. Otherwise, yeah, you're, I was always, I've was i always been a cramper. You cramp? Oh, like, nothing, have dude. you ever had, like, a full body on the plane? Yeah, I did, dude. Um, scariest thing ever. So not a, no, sorry, not, a, not on a body on the plane. Dude. Not on a plane. I I had a dude. Not didn't happen to me, but I had a buddy who got a full body in the cold tub one time. Oh, and he full bodied and then slowly was sinking into the water, and he couldn't get himself out of it. And he, he watched the whole thing. No, 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 no. He told me about this. Okay, later. I was like, he he he's just standing he's there. He's like, I'm like, hey, good luck, buddy. He's like, oh, another tackle, dude. No, he was a guard. His name was Patrick Obama. He was at Michigan, Damn. and the trainers like came and grabbed him as he was going underwater because yeah. he couldn't. He would have. Died. Yeah, hell I yeah. I mean, you dude. like to think even in a full body cramp, you fucking, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You can't. That just goes to show you how locked up to, uh, like, you're Jack, he's Jack, Titanic. Yeah. And he can't get up. God. And, and fucking, we had guys go into it on the plane where you're like, there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Like, dudes are in the aisle just you're not like, safe. Yeah. I don't feel safe right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Air Marshal. Yeah. Like, nothing. Somebody, dude. 
Yeah, yeah dude. dude. That sucks for you. I'm sorry about the full body cramps. That's all right. I used to I used to get them quite a bit actually. <laughs> I ran too the back and then ran back. Oh, you really ran like that? Yeah, I was trying to. You don't want to miss anything. This is yeah. fun, dude. It's a blast. Yeah, you know what, dude? Like, I, I, leave. I know. I'm about to have the worst FOMO the in the world. I know. Jack gave me the phone. I had to fucking. I don't want to go though. Well. We'll do, we'll do this again. We'll do this again. We're gonna figure out other shit to do. We gotta come on a uh, green light, dude. Will and I are gonna keep to keep talking. Right. Are you talking? About, oh, when he leaves? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm like here till fucking. I, hey, you twenty more? You're good. Mm-hmm. When are you? Um, oh, before I go, yeah. the draft. Yeah. Who are some studs you think are actual studs? More importantly, tell me Who about eight studs you think are actual studs. Actual studs. Because um, I heard this draft is not strong. I've been told that this draft's not strong, and I don't know if it's because there's not that many quarterbacks in it. But I heard it wasn't great. But I want to know about Aiden Hutchinson. It's, it's not a. It's not a. It's not an incredibly strong draft. No. Um. I think the middle rounds, from what it sounds like, are really like. Listen to guys that know. Middle rounds are good, and I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'll get to Aiden, but yeah. I think. Uh, I think the problem is, like, a ton of teams are just opting out of the first round. We just had less need on um, our pod, mm-hmm. and he was talking about his first round picks and shit, um, which he doesn't have. Like guys playing golf all this week. Uh, I think the lowest amount of first round picks in the in the first round, uh, first round picks in the first round since uh, the eighties is this year. So like really? people are not investing in the first round, and I don't know if it's because of this draft. To your point, um, I think the edge guys. It's hard for me to figure out who's the guy. Honestly, mm-hmm. I really like Aiden. I had him on my pod. I love the fucking guy. He uh, he all time. he gets the Chris Long uh, comps, which I think like I hate when guys get those comps. Why is that? Well, because it's kind of a backhanded comp because, like, you know, I didn't do, like, 120. I did 70, you mm-hmm. know, which is fine. Like, it's a great career. But yeah. when you're picked in the top five, like, what they're saying is you're a high-floor guy. Right. Like, so I don't love that that every white guy gets compared to me. Like, you know, give him a Nick Bosa every now and again. That would yeah. be fun for that yeah. kid. Um, but I think Aiden's somewhere in between. I think that the, the, the comps for him have been really irresponsible. I think the best comp for Aiden is, like, Patrick Kearney. Who I don't know if you remember Patrick Kearney, the eighty-something sack guy in the NFL, which to me is like pretty amazing. Like that's a one percent career. Um, that guy is tall. You know, he's maybe not got the longest arms. I think that's the one thing I worry about with Aiden is like he doesn't have that long arms, mm-hmm. and you know he's taller. So when you play taller guys, you got to assume to yeah. make up for the lack of leverage, they have length. So the thing he makes up for it with is really good technique. Um, yeah, he seems like he's got good technique. Yeah, and then the, the kid in Oregon, he doesn't even know how to put his hands on guys yet. I'm not saying he's not a worker, he's not a technician, but if he gets with the right coach, um, I think he, his upside's crazy. So you think Thibodeau's got a higher ceiling? Yeah, and, and it's not a slight. Again, no. we're talking, we're, we're cutting hairs here, and part of it is like when I hear somebody compared to me, I'm like, well, I, I don't know if I'd take me in the top five. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'd probably take me at 12 or 15. So like, I think, um, I think Aiden's, got a shot to prove out a top five career. But I do think Kayvon um, is exciting. I think the kid from Florida State's really exciting too. Um, but then again, it's hard. Like these guys have hard jobs. I watched the Florida State kid play Notre Dame and he had a bunch of tackles mm-hmm. and TFLs and sacks. But you know this, that doesn't mean you played a great game. Right. That mean you won a bunch of rushes. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he beats a lot of other teams. So it's really hard to call it this year with the edge guys, I think. Um, I don't know who the stud is. You know what I mean? First overall pick, who are you picking, though? I think they're going to go with the Walker kid from Georgia. I really do. Really? I do. Wow. Because I, I think Trent likes him. I think Trent, Trent Balky likes him. Um, and and I think he's he's into, like, uh, you know, guys with great measurables. And this mm. kid not only plays really hard, but he's got great measurables. The one thing I worry about with Trayvon Walker is, you know, he'll kind of get back there. And I wasn't a great finisher at times. Like, if I could tackle... I mean, who knows here? Right. But, um, who knows here? Right. Uh, Trayvon Walker misses a lot of sacks. Mm. Um, he also doesn't have a ton of production, and part of that's the Georgia defense. But you talk about like a, a long arm guy who can fucking make all those garbage sideline to sideline tackles, who can run people down, who can be disruptive. You can rush them inside. It's really a fit class. Like it's all about the fit. Who's mm. your? What do you need on your team? Right. Yeah, and that's why I like uh, Aiden to Jacksonville if they did it. From a fit standpoint, because they have Josh Allen, who's a different kind of player. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you mean by that? He's just different. Like he he he's a little bit more springy. He's a little bit more explosive. I think honestly, I think Josh Allen was underrated coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, Sixth overall pick. Yeah, no, but he was underrated by people because he mm-hmm. played at Kentucky. Um, so I think when you look at those two body types and you look at like the athleticism, and this isn't like a white guy shot at Aiden Hutchinson, they're just different. Mm-hmm. You know, like Hutch isn't isn't like a ten yard split guy. 
And that's not a, he's going to have to win one of the power. What do you run at the combine? Four, five, four, six? Ten yards, but we're talking about ten yards. Oh, so. I bet it's one, six, two. I think it is one, six, two. Let's just which guess. to me is not like, holy shit. Like, right. I don't, when I watch Aiden Hutchinson play, he's not like just burning the corner. And that's not a slight. I no, he's different that. different body types. Like JJ yeah. Watt is a Hall of Fame player. He is not burning the corner on anybody. But he what JJ Watt was really good at was the top of the rush. I don't know if you've noticed that, but like he's really good you know, that. it's 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 all the sacks that we would miss. Mm. Like we'd win with our hands and get washed. Um, but he has length and like really good like ankle flexion and body control. Until he hurt his back, dude, he could still kind of it wasn't like he was just running by guys, but yeah. there's only like a couple guys in the league who run by guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a huge JJ Watt fan. Well, uh, I never had to play against him. Yeah, I know. I have a. I mean, I haven't played against him very much, and I played against yeah. him for six years, twice a year. Yeah. The only problem is he checks people. Like he goes down the line, who's having a tough day? No question. And he just, I got it's effective. My my rookie year, <laughs> my rookie year, he tried me for like twenty five snaps in a row, tried and you. your boy. You held your own. Hey, I did. I in my head, I'm like, yo, you're low key locking down JJ Watt right now. In my like rookie year, and then he left. Yeah. And like since then, he's kind of been gone. I probably had like in the last seven years, after that, thirty more snaps against him, forty more snaps. Like he's always. He hasn't been the same people. since he played you. I ruined him. And honestly, Kyle him. had the same kind of. <laughs> Kyle had the Taylor. Kyle had the same kind of game against Indominus and Sue, mm. where like as a young player, a guard in Chicago that kind of got drafted to like block this guy yeah he was like you know he's one of the scariest guys he's, like he's, he's not only good monster, but he's also bro. scary dude, right he's scary dude and uh, i really enjoyed meeting him the times i've been around sue i'm like bro what a oh, gentleman hates him. you hate him okay hate sue? a lot of hate <laughs> coming from these two say, well, so, no i don't hate sue he yeah. is a gentleman but the motherfucker he's smart too he's got warren that. buffett on like his board like, i love i love that buffett. he's so smart and so like when I was around him, I was like, this guy, I could... Oh, I gotta go. I could do a book club with this guy. Right, 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 right. In the field, like, he's gonna beat me to death like with a CEO. book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, he's a different cat on the Kyle on had the, the same time, type of thing, Stop where it's it like, dudes. this is a big confidence boost for me. I saw this guy, so... All right, Tay, you... Bro... God, I know, I'm, I'm super... I'm heartbroken yeah. about it, dude. Yeah. Oh, oh I was damn. Damn. that shit, huh? You wanna know what I was? Who are you? A 152, I think. Really? So just going to show you... I'd, 164. Were you really? They'd always show your clip. See you, ball. All right, buddy. It was great seeing you. It was good seeing you too, dude. Yeah. I fought at the draft and then um. Let's kick it sometime when we don't have to do this. Shout out Georgia Boot. No free shout outs to the boys. Georgia Boot makes super good looking and super comfortable boots. So comfortable, you never want to take these boys off. These boots will hold up in any condition without sacrificing comfort or style. Think of it like the comfort technology of an athletic shoe packed into a great looking boot i don't know if you guys catch the uh, bus and spring football tour i'm yeah. sure you guys did it's all over youtube it's all over the stuff that you can go watch but i wore these jo these georgia boots everywhere we went nebraska michigan tennessee uh acme feed and seed i wear them around the house i wear them when i'm grilling on the on the fucking grill dude whether you're working on your feet all day working around the house grilling with the boys these boots won't sacrifice comfort or style head over to georgiaboot.com use code bussin b-u-s-s-i-n for a generous 20 percent off from the boys to you. I you guys, in were, getting the, you in guys were getting into the you guys were getting into the block and pass rushing stuff. So that's more of like a like I said back, but I'd love to talk about podcasting, bro. Let's talk about it, bro. This how is the you, meeting of the mind. How do you feel about it? Because I was listening to you earlier and it's like the same transitions. I'm sitting there like you're actually working with people who use email yes. and organizing and yes. a way more structured, and you hire people that understand that game. Yes. I, I don't feel like we do as much going into it, and that's something, like, we've learned. I think the problem is, like, these guys will probably tell you, we're so, like, built on trust. Like, when you're on a team, you got to, like... So I think the hardest part is, like, building trust among each other that, you know, we know first, like, what the protocols are, like, kind of how we get content out, like, how things get done, and then, like, actually, like, can we all handle our responsibilities and... I got some hardworking guys that answer the bell every day. So like, I trust them, yeah. you know? Uh, but at the same time, like I have, I have like a way I like things done. And, and I'm also learning to do all the little things that you didn't imagine doing as a podcaster. So if you like everything done the way you like it done, you also have to try to get into those spaces and learn those skills. I think that's really fucking hard, dude. Yeah, and if not, you got to understand yeah, what the people who are actually doing exactly. it. Exactly, and the good thing is, like you said, like, you trust your guys, I trust my guys. You know, like, so you know, like, you work towards a, a place where you don't have to do as much. 
I think when you're getting something off the ground, if you want it done the way you want it done, like you have to do it. And yeah. So I see you doing a lot of things, you know, on your own. And I think that's what's really cool about you is like you not only podcast well, but you also run a like kind of an operation well. Like, you know what I mean? Taylor's playing that, sometimes, man. like you're fucking and you gotta handle a lot of shits. And that's the hardest part, is not the fucking this. Dude, isn't that crazy? I feel like a lot of like that's what's not really understood. Yeah. About pod- like even as podcasters going into it, like I don't feel like we like I know for me, I didn't think it took like all this kind of work. So I'm reading books and shit yeah. and like leadership. Well, you sent business. me one of the books. How is it? I haven't ordered it yet. I was gonna say I don't. I don't remember sending it to you. Well, no, you. you sent, I recommended you, it. Yeah. To you. Well, you might have been high. So I got another one. I got another one for you. Okay. I'll send it to you though. But I, chances are, I, I should get through the first one because I'm not a big book reader. But when I did see the title, I was like traction. Traction. I was like, that's cool. Um, you told me it. It kind of taught you how to like be a leader. Right. In a health di- systems and. That's the thing, dude. You're a leader. You were a leader in the NFL, like special teams guy, but you're a fucking leader. Like, what was Matt? Oh, hang on, special teams guy. Yeah, later in my career. Later in your career, special teams guy. Like, (laughs) you were a captain as, uh, you know, like people in Tennessee, like you weren't playing every down in Tennessee. Right. But like people every, from every corner of the locker room gravitated towards you because you have like a little bit of it, dude. Like you got charisma and shit and like you're a fucking real guy. But that doesn't translate necessarily to like the business world. It right. does in a way that like you know how to work and be a teammate, but leadership doesn't necessarily translate to the business world. You have to learn how to like, we have a funny joke where Matt, who's here, like we had this big meeting. It's not that big. It's just a meeting. Right. And I, um, we had a podcast the next day and uh, we did this airing of grievances, which is fun. Like you guys should try that sometimes if you guys are like have mad, you're mad at each other for shit. You just turn the mics on and talk about it. Um, and Matt was like, I have one. And I was like, what is it? He's like, in the meeting yesterday, you called us all motherfuckers. And I was like, holy shit, I did. That's an air of grievance? Well, hold on a second. <laughs> okay. No, I know. And I, and I, you motherfuckers, okay. dude. I said to do it this way. Hold on. So the funniest shit is, I go, God damn, that was, I was like, I, I don't remember that. And I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings or whatever, but like, what was the context? And he was like, well, he's, you said you guys are some hardworking motherfuckers. I'm like, that's a fucking compliment. That's a good compliment. Where I come from, if I call you a hardworking motherfucker, or if I call you a motherfucker, like that guy's a motherfucker. Dude, dude. you're a motherfucker, bro. The, hey, have you blocked that kid from fucking Iowa? He's a motherfucker. Yeah. Like that, that kind of thing. And it's just like, I know we can talk like that. And we were kind of joking, but it is tough. Like you got to adjust your like cadence and kind of like how organized you are. And like, you can be a leader on the football field without having real world leadership skills. Right, right, right. And keeping like, I think for me, like you'd want, you'd want things done a certain way. And then it like, if it wasn't, um, you more so have to go, like I felt for me, I had to go like more internal. Like, why am I getting so upset about this? If I want it done a certain way, maybe I need to communicate better. Like your EQ, I feel like has to go up. No question. Being in the seat of like, doing operative stuff we're bad textures i don't know if you're a bad texture but like i think when, i, te- I think I've been, if, solid D line just- okay I, I was trying to say like i didn't want you to be like well that's not that fucking weird but i'm a terrible texter um i spent years in D line group text like we just text in shorthand yeah like we just don't communicate fully with like what we're what we're trying to say right and like for like two years these guys are reading terrible you know edit notes and and like texts and you know like maybe even emails sometimes. Yeah. And uh, and I'm just not doing a good job at it. I'm not making myself clear enough. I know. But they also have to say, Chris, you suck at that. For sure. There's definitely, like, both sides can learn how to get be- to be better at it. And that's the dynamic of, they're not, they're, say, they're not criticizing me. Maybe sometimes it's because, you know, I'm a big, scary football player, and I'm not leading the right way because I'm a big, scary football player. So right. it's like... Uh, because when you text and if you're kind of like, whether it's shallow, short, or whatever, like, everyone reads it from their own, like, lens. Like, right. you texting me, like, hey, man, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Like, it's going to be great. And you're like, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what but I mean? that will get me, too. I just mean being unclear as fuck. Like, that, yeah, that's like uh, trying to read your wife's text message back to you <laughs> yeah. when you're on, like, a trip or something. Yeah. You know, like, that's that kind of third eye. I feel you. But me, I just don't communicate well. I'm just not clear sometimes. Are you, you have, have to be. if You, you have to stop and, and, and ask clearly what you want done. Right, right, yeah. right. Are you having fun with it? Sometimes, no. I mean, but sometimes, hell yeah. Like, most days, fuck yeah. But, like, honestly, I don't know if you ever feel a little burnt out, like, fucking having to talk every day. I think the more we felt burnt out was more of, like, 
probably these last couple of months, like doing the whole Bustin' Spring tour, just because we're around each other a lot, you're running pods. Like last week, we did a pod like every day. I was. So that. by the end of it, with the new baby, I felt like that played into it a lot. But you're just kind of like worn down uh, from having to talk so much. Bro, you, well, and because you only have so many like things to say and jokes through with that week. Like I don't like, know. How, I don't know how on. you're. 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 You got to be running on fumes, man. So much respect getting all this stuff done, but like. Yeah, it's hard. And I think the hardest part is like when you got to talk every day, you're not impressed with your own bullshit. So you got to like actually believe your own bullshit, which is not bullshit. I'm not saying it's not uh, yeah, true. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I'm saying like, I'm not, I'm imagining being in the chair listening to me after the third day in a row I'm talking. I'm, I'm like, this isn't interesting. Right. But it is to people. Right. That's the mind but, fuck and it's of a it. different audience. Everything like, we're always just in front of these guys. Right. Sometimes they might like, they've been grinding the last few weeks, like claps could get lower or yeah. like laughs that we might think we're getting a laugh on. It's like, oh shit, was that even entertaining? Like, yeah. should we cut that out? Yeah, and you got to overextend yourself sometimes. Yeah. To like try to be entertaining on a day that you're not, like right. there's nothing like to, to talk about. To make Garrett laugh. You mm -hmm. got to be a little more. Yeah. You'll glance at Gary and be like, okay, that was a decent Dude, laugh. See, or... Jack, you always got Jack in the back. That's when you know you're like, it's you're good laugh, hitting on some cylinders because Jack will give you some love, man. Jack will give you love. Yeah, JP, you get praise. So you look at JP and he'll just have like a smirk on his face. The hard no, you part, always do. The hard part is like, uh, you know, I think the, the hardest part is like, we're cool, easygoing guys. I don't think you're an ego guy. I'm not an ego guy. So the hardest part is liking your bullshit. Like, you know, like the sound of your voice, like what you're talking about. Like, like I don't think our podcast, I don't think it's cool. Like, but people think it's cool. You know, like, I don't I know if you ever feel that rips, way. Dude, I think our shit rips. It does rip. I, like, honestly, and, and honestly, if I, <laughs> if I really stepped back and took a week off and listened to our shit, I'd be like, this is fucking awesome. But, you know, it's, it's hard to be like, yeah, I like my shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I understand what you're you saying. Like, mean? hearing yourself and, oh. you know, like, do I like watching? Like, it's weird that people like this or whatever. Yeah, dude. It's fucking like you're like. But I think it's, I just think it rips from the whole perspective thought of it. Like, yo, we're running a pie. Like, we're on a fucking bus right now. Yeah, you it know is what I mean? cool. But then there's the whole. Like what do you do for a living thing? What? Or, like when people party. say, what do you do for a living? Yeah. Oh, I got a podcast. I'm a podcaster. I think they're <laughs> like, okay, I just met five other white dads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do the same <laughs> thing. Like, you know, like, and then the only way to impress people with your podcast is to flex on them and be like, it's monetized. You know, like. Or, and I, I see what you're saying because I get this. It's like, I feel the same weird anxieties of like, nah, I got to, now they want to know about it. I got to kind of talk it up since they don't know about it at all. Yeah. And, um, now I think I want to play into the whole white dad podcasting, like make up some title, like just throw out some bullshit some about what it bullshit. is. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Like self-help And bullshit. make them think like whatever they're thinking. That's not bullshit. Some people could, could use right. some self-help. And however they're thinking, allow them to double down on their initial thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no so question. I can go and be like, yeah, I just had fun in this so moment. I can fuck, fuck off. off. Right. Yeah. But another thing is like, you know, it's just um, everybody has access. So it's a really competitive space. Yeah, that is true. And like, how much of your life do you show? Like, I know I show a lot of my stuff. You know That's what I mean? One thing, I like, know people struggle. Like, I know people have all different opinions on yeah. all of that stuff. So yeah. I feel like that is a thought too. There's on, like Dan, who's like very private, big cat. Oh yeah, I was gonna say yeah. he tweets like he's talking all day long. But, but he, yeah, doesn't, he, he doesn't very give private. you a lot unless you got that green unless you got that green star up on Instagram. The green star. What yeah. the fuck does that mean? But you're in the friends. Oh, Isn't that what that oh, means? Oh, the close friends. The close friends. You're not in the close friends. Yeah. Oh, you are okay. Good. Yes, We're so in the I've group. seen his kid. I'll sit okay. there and be like, "Oh, I know I'm seeing something private." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But he's the he's like, "Well, I'm honored to be in this." The thing about Dan and PFT, <laughs> the thing about Dan and PFT is, I was like the first guest on that podcast, which doesn't mean I'm like anything special. I'm just saying. But it's pretty sick. They knew it was the easiest phone call. Like this guy will help us. Hell yeah. Uh, but I've seen like that whole thing go down, and uh, and they've been like so fucking famous. They're famous, bro. Like, oh they're, yeah. They're famous people like. You know, he would never want to admit that, but that's a famous person. He's They're a both famous, famous person, yes. Both famous. Like, people, like, that's his shtick. Podcasts on a sunglass, or <laughs> sunglasses on a podcast. Podcasts right. on a sunglasses. Um, Big Cat has, like, bits that everybody knows. Like, uh, it's hard to stay, like, private and be, like, you know, have any kind of life. Like, if if we want to be successful at this, like, what does our success look like? What's this? What's success look like for you here in this bus? In the bus? Like, I'm talking about, like, in five years. That's a good question. Um, you, got, you need to read a book about planning your successes. No, no, no. I'm just thinking like, 
You said there. Don't you? Don't you feel like you surprise yourself sometimes about where, we're, like, where we're at in the podcasting world? Yeah, but I'm, like, it's like there's a part. There's a cynical part of me that believed, like, yo, we can make something dope. Like, I truly felt like we could have these kinds of conversations, yeah. and people would fuck with it. Especially if I'm doing the, if I'm doing it while I'm playing, and kind of take people on the journey with me as like the hardworking, yeah. the the NFL's hard, the working man's NFL player. Yeah, that whole stick, right? Yeah, yeah. and so. There's a part that's like, yeah, it'll be sick one day. But the fact that like we're here and actually doing all this yeah. stuff, and we're doing a live show, and we yeah. did a bus and spring tour, did stand up, yeah, and people are like fucking with our little like one liners or bits. I'm having fun on the internet. It's just kind of like surreal. Like, damn, this is pretty sick. It's really cool. But you've also become Getting famous. A bag. You've also become famous during a pandemic now. So okay. like you've been out in the world, but like I don't know how closed it was. Probably not that closed here. There was like a two year period oh, where I'm I mean, from it was or... closed for, you know, what the, the, we had the phase one, two, and three shit. And then once it got to like the, the two, it, it was going from two to three. And then once you kind of had to go back a couple spaces yeah, in yeah. Nashville, that started to piss people off. Probably I just don't more. know, like, if five years down the road, like, if success is becoming more popular as a podcast, I'm not crazy about the video component. Not for you, because I think it's awesome. I get why people love watching video. I fucking love watching videos of this show. I love watching videos of, like, podcasts I like. Like, the funniest shit is seeing people's facial expressions, all that shit. But I kind of don't like where it's going, where now I have to be, like, a internet TV guy. I see what you're saying. That's the part of podcasting that I don't love. If I was just going to do this and talk to you and, like, people were listening in their cars, like, you know, how famous could you get? People don't know what you look like, that sort of right. thing. I just think, and that's another thing, is, like, Instagram. It's like, you got to use your Instagram. You got to use your Twitter. Like, I, you just can't be normal. Talk. If you want to be successful at this, you can't be normal. You can't live a normal life anymore. It's not like podcasting five years ago. Right. That's all. But to that, you build up a you build up a platform and audience enough. Like you won't have to continue to do it all the time. Like I like Big yeah. Cat and them. That like they enjoy it. like that's Barso. That's the world. Yeah. So I feel like if we were down the road and the podcast gets continues to get more successful in like five years, You'll cross that bridge. I, I, yeah, I feel like you could actually look at it for all the work you put into, it and you know you're kind of no question not falling back or going into the abyss, but you can calm down because you have such a big enough audience like big cat and them. They don't have to continue to do all that stuff. Right. You know what I mean? I think he, he just loves doing it. He loves the internet. He loves being a degenerate gambler yeah. and speaking with all the, the fans about it. Also, like there's Tim Ferriss. He's a great example or he's a good example. Tim like Ferriss. Rogan doesn't post oh, like the comedian, Tim Ferriss. No, Tim Ferriss, Who's the podcaster. Tim Ferriss? The Tim, four hour work week, four I'm hour sure body. He's awesome, and I'm just not very online. Yeah, but uh, Tim is somebody who has a, like an extremely successful podcast, but he doesn't like tweet and do all that stuff. Joe Rogan doesn't tweet and do Bill all that. Bill Simmons stuff. doesn't tweet. That's what I'm really. saying. Really? Yeah, you're right, and I, that's what I like to get to. But you know, you make more money on these deals if you can say this is my, you know, like on the front end of you trying to be somebody, you have to have the impressions because that's the language yeah. people are speaking now. You sign a deal, it's like how many impressions are you getting? But how many so different deals money. do you need to get? You don't need to, but if you want your audio thing to become successful, you need the the, the backing. Like, if right. I want good guests, that sort of thing, like, you know how it is. It's hard. It helps to have somebody that, that fucks with you that has connections and shit. So it's, it's better to accelerate that if you can. And I get I get that side of it. Like me, I feel like, like, if I could explain the stage that I feel like we're in right now, like, to me, I'm in, yes, like, station. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in, like, college. Yeah. Like, you're, kind of like. You know, like, you got a shot to be in the NFL, but you got to work your dick off to try and, like, get to that NFL, right, like, right, level right, about it. Right. So, like, all the monotony of, like, having fun on social and the internet and the conversations and all the relationship building, like, I feel like I'm in that 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 college football I just, mode. I just got burnout. I got burnout last fall. I get burnout in the fall. And, you like, were, it you takes, took a hiatus from Twitter, right? Months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got burnout in general. We were doing three shows a week, and I'm doing Amazon. And I know, like, NFL media people are like... Who the fuck cares? But, like, we produce the show. Like, I book my own guests. You know, I do a lot of our own shit along with this awesome team. But, like, we're in there grinding. Like, Reed, one of my producers, I think one, I stopped paying attention one fall. He's working, like, 70 hours a week. Like, like we're grinding, like, because we're trying to keep up with the, 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 you know, the daily shit. Right. Which is a little bit of a, a life handcuff. So I can get burnt out doing that. And some NFL media people are like, that's the deal you made. Like, we all made this deal. But sometimes I'm just not crazy about the, like, everyday part of it. But you're running the whole operation versus yeah. those just guys who are kind of like, yeah, they're being the town. They're showing up. They yeah, kind of no understand question. where they are. That's, that's the what they went off. to school for. Maybe not. I mean, obviously not all of them, but the, that's been their passion for. I pay myself. It's, it's a nice, yeah, yeah, it's a good little. Do you want to get into, like, more of a daily show thing? 
No. You talk about being burnt out. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more, like maybe a little bit more with less work. You know what I mean? Like if somebody came to us and was like, let's let's have you guys do a YouTube show. Like McAfee's got a nice, McAfee's done a really good job of like a template for what a lot of people can be. Right. Um, which I think why a lot of he's media. a daily show. No, I know. But that's what I'm saying. Like he's found a way to do that in a very easy, effortless way. Um, not that that takes a lot of, hard, doesn't take a lot of hard work, but that guy also does a lot of other shit too. Oh, shit, like, love, bro. So, he does the most. Right. So he's just, he leaves no tread on the tires, bro, which is the way to live life. But I do think, you know, like the show, if you can get it to a place where it was, I got a bunch of my buddies in the room. We have guests lined up for Tuesdays and Thursdays, like we do, or, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's a 30 minute YouTube show or something. You don't have to go three hours. Mm -hmm. I would do something like that. Yeah. It's just a lot of work, dude. You know, after yeah. the season, we do shows on Sunday night. I know Big Cat and them do that that way, but like the games wrap up, we finish with our work at like 3 a.m., 4 in the morning. I don't sleep till 4 in the morning on Sunday nights. So I'm fucked up all week, like just tired, dude. I, you know, it's like weird. You barely see your kids for a couple of days. I'm like, to do what? To make less money than I made playing football? Right. I'm still making really good money. I didn't think it would be good. I didn't think it'd be bad, but uh, it's a grind, dude. Yeah. You probably identify with a little bit of this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it is it is insane that you guys are able to do that. Like, stay up till the we are at night to do all the football stuff. Everybody like, does. They, like, part of my takeoff. All the writers do. I know, but, but I'm like, I don't want to. I didn't, you know. I didn't but say a, you yeah. come, you get to come out from a different angle. Like, you got, you got the, you had a nice long career in the NFL. You got paid a couple of times. Like, I feel like that kind of plays away. Like, I don't have to be fucking. Why am I beating myself down like this? Because you, because ultimately the good moments, just like the NFL, just like the NFL. Because some days you're like, why are we doing this? But, like, you do it for the fun moments, like, the really good laughs, like, dudes, just, like, the locker room atmosphere of, like, you guys, it's so fucking, the cool part is hanging out. I think that's oh, the coolest the part. part. I think it's, like, the coolest part is having a little locker room that you come into every day where you have a really abnormal job, like, yeah. and that's the best part, like, knowing you have a destination, we're all grinding towards something. And the little moments, a great guest, a really funny bit, Oof. something that makes you laugh every time you guys hear about it. Yeah. Like, that's what keeps you going. So I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. I'm just, I'm complaining like we would in the locker room. Right, about right, right. coaches and about practice. That's what I was telling them earlier. They were we were talking about, like, dad life and stuff like that. And Taylor Taylor said something. I was like, oh, I mean, dude, I do love it. I just also love bitching. Like, I love that's complaining. in our it's, DNA, it's dude. It's funny. That's like, you sit there, like, you want to come in and have, like, the shittiest stories just so you can make some of the guys laugh at the table. No question. Like, well, how was it last night? It's like, oh, she fucking sucked, dude. Like, I, I actually thought about leaving her last night. Like, you, for real. You are that guy, Right, too. yeah. Like, like I, I, would I, come, I just love I would come make sure I was sitting next to you in the mornings to cheer we me up because I was in a really bad, I was known to be in a bad mood. Yeah. So, like, I would have come sat with you to try to cheer me up. Oh, bro, we would have had a great Good. time. I'm talking, we'd be yeah. scheming at, yeah. at breakfast. Let's like, come back together. You're cut, yeah, you're cut. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. Yeah. Mask on to year, I can't think of what year it is. Year 10. I don't know. When you take five years off, would it be year 17 or something? Fuck it, dude. Yeah, year yeah. 17. Yeah, let's do it, Going dude. back in time for let's year 17. It. Package deal. Oh, Package that deal. could be good. Who would we play for? If you could wave a wand and play for any team, who would you play for? If I could wave a wand and, and play and, for any and, team. Yeah, and like, hey, like, listen, sure this is... is yeah, yeah, Oh, you got to go. Let's go. I do got to go let's soon. Go. Hang on, I want to finish Give me one answer and let's roll, because... I probably got to go. If I get wave of one, it would yeah. be, it'd probably be the Packers. The Packers. Yeah. Here's why. Because you, you want to live in Appleton. No, the, 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 the reason is a lot of my coaches that I've played for over the years are all there. Yeah. So when I was in Washington, my linebacker coach, Kirk Olivadotti, yeah. he is now, he's the guy who got me, took a chance on me, who brought me in his room. Like, Hey, I made the switch. Like yeah. you got to fucking make me right. Yeah. Type of thing. So and you then, feel like, at home. Yeah. yeah. So I would be in his room. Okay. My, the D coordinator there, Joe Barry. He was yeah. our D coordinator in Great Washington. guy. Awesome dude. Love Joe Barry. He, had a beer with him in Manhattan like, yeah, Beach. Yeah. Awesome fucking guy. Yeah. But he's the D coordinator there. Yeah. Matt LaFleur, he was the OC. He was at Washington when I was at Washington, and he yeah. was the OC at Tennessee. We were both in Tennessee together. Right, right. He was and in Tennessee. And when we played Washington, yeah. I was, like, sitting in the offensive room with him. He's this like, he's like, come, uh, come in my room and help me game plan. It's like six degrees of separation. Yes. Yeah. So he's the head coach. And now Rich Bisaccia, who's a special teams and head coach guy at Vegas, he's now the special teams guy at Green Bisaccia's Bay. Bisaccia up there? Bisaccia's at Green Bay. That they were just texting me fucking, like, busting my balls about fatherhood, and I'm sending them photos of my little girl yesterday. But if I could wave a wand, it would be fucking Green Bay. Clip that. Clip that. I need this. Because you get him going. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, well, I like it when people, when I'm on my pod and I don't have to ask questions, so I'm yeah. just kind of like... Yeah, I don't feel like, he, Taylor don't really take a whole lot of, he won't take a whole lot of interest in that. He won't take in a lot the, of interest. He won't yeah. take a whole lot of interest. Bro, you met Megan. He's dry as a motherfucker. Oh, bro, dude. he's so, funny, man. Yeah. I thought you were going to bring him. No, Do Dr. Fax, so, doctor, I want to shout out Dr. Fax. Dr. Fax will be with me in uh, in Vegas. We'll be doing the Coors Light live watches. Follow Dr. Fax. What's your TikTok for people? Will you leave this in? Deal real. Deal Reels on Deal TikTok. Deal Reels. He's, he's a thrifter. You can check his eBay out, too, but I know you're running you can out of time. check his eBay out, too. So you got to get on TikTok, too. Like, I made a TikTok. Oh, yeah. Just to recycle my Instagram videos. Be like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, bro. He, but he's, I love Chris because he's a fucking grinder, but I can see, I can sense the first round and first rounderness in him. I'm just like, man, no. Like, I'll try until you'll try, like, Taylor, who gets super excited. Like, when we're doing well, you're Taylor, just good at that. You're, you're, good at, you're good at being an entertainer. Like, and I mean, that as a compliment. Like, you that. gotta be, you gotta wanna entertain people. I wanna entertain people, but I'm nervous about just trying to be funny all the time. You know, like, it's like, oh, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like, all the time. If you're not, like, all the time. This is funny that I'm not being funny right here. Yeah. I know. I'm just being dry and mad or I'm just bitching. I don't wanna just be on TikTok, like, you know, like, I don't know what do you what do you do there? Uh, you just take your videos and just put them on there. Like I probably have three minutes. There might be. <laughs> Is that what people are doing on people TikTok do the trend, to go viral? Hey, yeah, but subscribe, one. Chris Long. He's a fucking stud. green light. Green go light pod. his podcast. Green yeah, light is also on YouTube. <laughs> All of that stuff. He's phenomenal. I really, love him. But this is an awesome podcast. I love you, bro. It's I good to see you, bro. This is so this is great good to see you, bro.